and we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for yeah. you to get your just do. Yeah, you know the deal. We back again. Yo. A round of applause for Jersey's finest. A lot of content creators not worthy, but they minus. They get offended and start singing like the whiners. Talking like they tough, but it's only screaming and whining. My homie just do us to catch you don't come to Your squad get run through by the time you come to you duck food You suckers talk tough on the internet Revealing all your threats now we got you trapped in the net Just do be on this grind y'all better hustle up You dead lifted 90 pounds we doing muscle ups There's really no comparison His voice sound like a derringer Throwing a towel it's just embarrassing My dog just very philosophical and psychological and he mixed it all with good boxing news. These YouTubers feel like Bishop, I guess they got the juice. But it's lonely at the top to just to feel like child abuse. Be respectful, he don't want to talk wild and loose. If you can't relate, you get dismissed like a mild dispute. These weird cats will tell lies, then they hide the truth. Why beyond views? You lose your life when you collide with dude. It's just do boxing. Or you cowards quit jocking. Kirk is official with no other options. Yeah, yeah. You know the deal. Judah Ben, we in the spot. Just do boxing. Yeah. And of course, shout out to Mrs. Doom. Holding the whole family down. Word them up, word them up. Don't provoke me to anger Or else you'll be in danger I may flame of fire and burn the body books How may grease snake I bet with poison Ain't nobody's business I will live my he life I will live my he love Everybody talks about the heroes Wookas are but falling heroes. I'm the transmitter, you're the receiver. Excuse me. I'm the what, what, what song is that? It's a composition I made. <laughs> it's a composition I made. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all know how I do. Start the stream off with just a little bit of humor. But salute to my boy Judah Ben for the dope intro as always, man. Good Tuesday to the family, man. Y'all smash the like button on the way in. Punch it one time for your boy. We back again. Good Tuesday to the family, man. We back with another boxing conversation, man. We got some things to talk about. Let me say what's up to the people. <laughs> Miss Joy. <laughs> Miss Joy, salute, salute to the queen. How you feeling today? Appreciate you stopping through. I be who I be. Salute family. How you feeling, man? Yeah, Bob, Bob, Bob been in the gym, y'all. He been hitting it. He been pumping on, man. Kurt, my bro, appreciate you stopping through. How you feeling, man? Back again on the grind, man. Big B Low, what's good with the family? How you feeling, bro? Appreciate you stopping through. So you hope T hope to you and but. Oh, terrible with Teal and but uh, so we get a 147 undisputed fight. You know what I'm saying? Kyle Sports, salute family. Appreciate you pulling up. How you feeling? God self, my bro. What's good with it? D Free, what's good with it, Brody? How you feeling? Undercard and boxing, my God. What's good, family? D1, what's good with it, bro? Cash, what's going on with it? What's going on, my bro? Kurt Egger Chavez, Jersey in the building. Salute, Brody. Orlando Finney, what's happening with it, bro? 
How you feeling, bro? Salute to you. Zoom, my brody. What's happening with it, bro? How you feeling? Mike Kirkland, how you feeling, bro? Appreciate you stopping through. D-Man, my brody. What's happening with it, man? What's going on? The box is mine. What's going on? You know what I mean? Bob done came out flexing on y'all. Fizzle, what's good with it, brody? Appreciate you stopping through. Salute to everybody in the building, man. We back again to have another build, man. Salute to everybody. Let me make sure I miss nobody. Um, all right, we caught up. Salute to Jersey is in the building always, man. <laughs> they always starting with a Modelo and a Blunt. Talk to them, Zoom. Go ahead and get your chill on. Bob say he's going to bring them belts back to top rank himself. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know, man. Bob is the yeah, – and Jay got some champions. Talk to him, Jeff. Talk to him, man. Talk to him, man. Salute to New York with Jersey is doing doing some great things, man. We got some some dope fighters coming out of Jersey, man. Salute to everybody in the chat, man. We're gonna have us a good build today, as we always do. It's a few things to talk about. Like I said, anytime the family send me something, we're gonna build on it. I'm gonna get my just due on it. I see a few things to talk about. You know what I mean? Uh Bernard Hopkins, the aftermath for the Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia. You know, um, I had played yesterday for y'all with what with, with, uh, Oscar De La Hoya had to say. He looked like a damn hostage in that room with the one light on. <laughs> to talk about he getting de death threats. <laughs> like, whatever, bro. <laughs> whatever, bro. And then you got, you got uh, b -Nar. I ain't get into what b -Nar had to say. He had, he had a little statement. He finally responded to why he wasn't there. Nobody's trying to hear their excuses, bro. Y'all left that man hanging at the altar in his biggest fight. Nobody's trying to hear y'all was getting death threats. Word got back. Yeah, yeah, word got back. Y'all thought word wasn't going to get back. Word got back that you and Oscar been beefing, bro. That's why y'all ain't show up. Y'all not even on the same accord. Y'all probably beefing because y'all sat up there and lied to everybody about that boy being able to beat Tank. That's what's happening. Y'all ain't want to eat crow. Y'all try to take the, take the back door out. You get what I'm saying? Suit to fizzle, man. Appreciate you, Brody. 817, what's happening with it, fam? How you feeling, bro? We're gonna get into it, man. Salute to everybody in the building. And then you got um, you got Josh Taylor. I believe that's the last time podcast he was on, and um, he had some things to say about Ted Fimo. You know what I'm saying? He said he, he wanna end this dude's career, and then he wanna move up and fight Crawford. And I'm starting to feel like, you know, I'm calling Bob Aram the puppet master, y'all, because I'm feeling like this was part of his plan all along, man. In a, in a weird way, like you just think this could have been part of the plan anyway. You get what I'm saying? Either way, the belt stay on his side of things, right? I think this was part of the plan. Bob Aram is undeniably the puppet master, man. And again, he maybe never had no intent to help try to make an undisputed fight with, with Bud and EJ. But I bet you he'd be willing to make Josh Taylor and, and Bud Crawford. I bet you he'd be willing to make that. I guarantee you he'd be willing to make that fight. Because he know what time it is. He know what EJ, them belts leaving. Them belts staying over there on the PVC side. He feel like he feel like he could do something with Josh Taylor, man. I think he think he could do, do something with Josh Taylor. But I, I think it's going to backfire. You know it, man. Bob been saying put your money on Loma. He's not offering no extension at 35. Come on, writing is on the wall. Come on, man. Telling everybody. I told y'all. Told y'all this dude. Dude ain't no good, y'all. Yeah, I'm telling you, bad up, Oscar. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you facts, D man. Safe travels, uh 817. Safe travels, bro. He's showing about to be on the last damn podcast. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Keyshawn, he just did a live a, a little while ago. I don't know why he ain't saving. He's saying he is the new generation of boxing, too, man. Yes, sir. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Talk to your boy. What y'all got? How y'all feeling about this? We're going to get into this, man. We're going to get into it. We got, the, we got the quote. She did a live as well. She did a live as well. She, she, she doubled down again. She did a live today as well. I've been, you know, I was doing my little homework being on the Instagram lives and I caught the quote. She she doubled down. She she says she, she guaranteeing she promising a KO over Hannah Gabriels. Says she been talking too much. She says she gonna shut her mouth. She says she can't fight like that. She not that good. She says you knocked her down the first time and you living off a knockdown. And she got up and, and, and beat you up every round. You know what I mean? The quote was on fire. She was talking her talk 
and I love it. Um, yeah, yo, listen, 817, he was back, he was in rare form, he was talking his talk, man. I wish he would have saved the live so I could have played it for y'all, man. I was hoping he was gonna save the live, but I don't think he ain't saved it. He was talking, he was talking spicy, man. Keyshawn said he gonna start, he gonna start being a promoter, man. Man, I, I can't remember everything he was saying, but he was talking that talk, man. He was talking that slick talk for everybody. You know what I'm saying? We got Oshaki Foster, you know what I mean? He said he ready for Cordina. We're going we gonna, we gonna to build on a few things, man. We got a few things to build about. You got Charlo, and I know y'all seen that clip from a while ago, so I'm discussing it now. I know y'all seen Charlo saying um, he talked to Demetrius Andre on the phone for like an hour, and they talked about making a fight. And again, y'all, that's how I think fights are going to get made. The fights are going to get made when both fighters on the same accord, man, and they ain't both on social media jockeying for position. Fights are never going to get made that way. I'm telling you right now, that, that's the start of something real. That's how fights get made. With Charlo and Andre did, it's something they should have did years ago, but better late than never, y'all. Better late than never because as it stands, they still undefeated and they both were champions. You get what I'm saying? Charlo's still a champion at 160, but... You know what I'm saying? That fight make all the sense in the world. And I think that's how it gets made. Them getting on the phone with each other, putting them petty differences to the side and making making some real, you know, s having a real conversation and making some shit really happen instead of talking about it. Again, jockey for position, talking crazy on social media, ain't going to get no fights made. It ain't going to get no fights made. And could y'all believe it, man? Could y'all believe could y'all believe it? Remember, Just Dude was telling y'all the media orchestrated beef between Jamal Charlo and, and David Benavidez. Could y'all believe that the next, the, the last time they seen each other was no fist being thrown? Do y'all know the last time Charlo and Benavidez seen each other, they embraced and hugged, and, and I don't know what they talked about. Do you know they, you know what I mean? They linked up. Didn't I tell y'all that was a media orchestrated beef? It's fake, man. Don't buy, don't buy it. Them dudes never had an issue with each other. They never had an issue with each other. But their sellers tell you that they got an issue. They wasn't even in the same weight class all this time, y'all. And people was telling Charlo he a duck for not fighting a dude that's not even in his weight class. I just wanted to throw that out there, man. Them dudes seen each other the last time and embraced. Like I said, man, it be it's 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 the competitor in them dudes that got that had them talking the way they was talking. It was never no beef. It was always competition with them dudes, man. Like the fight, I think Mo needs a soft touch at the two years of alcoholism. Hey, look, look, definitely, man. Listen, whether even alcoholism or not, definitely, if he, if that was the case. But uh, either way, you know, that much time out the ring, D one, I'm with you. He need he need a get back fight, and I, and I think that's what they're gonna do. But he did say he don't need no tune ups. He'll go straight to it. But I know that's again, that's that competitor, and you you want to say that, but at the end of the day. You and your team are going to make a decision. You're not going to make that decision alone. And that's why a lot of times you will hear a fighter say one thing, but another thing ends up happening. It's not because that fighter went back on what they said or is not willing to stand on business. It's because in that moment when a fighter says something like what Charlo said, you know what? I'll fight. I'll fight. No tune ups. I'll just fight. That's something he's saying as an individual. But, you know, those decisions are made as a team. So, again, it's, it's some things they sound cool when you say it, but. When you that's in the that's in the, the heat of the moment, you know what I mean? You got a camera shoved up in front of your face, you trying to give a, the right answer when in reality, you're gonna say one thing, but you know when you go to sit down and discuss it, you and your team gonna come up with something that makes sense. They're not gonna just let you go out there and be dumb. And you spent a lot of time out the ring. So to you to go right back into the fire, look, I respect it. I ain't protecting him from it. If that's what he wants, that's what he wants, right? But I don't know if that's what he's gonna get. You get what I'm saying? I'm just being realistic. It sounds cool, but as it stands, I think that dude might get a, a tune-up fight, and then he can get back to it. You get what I'm saying? I think he's going to get a tune-up fight, and then, look, throw him right back into the fire, man. Because, I look, I want to see all these fights. He's only getting older. He got some He got some ground to cover, man. He got some He got some ground to make up. I mean, calling that chant. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, D1? So, again, man, I just be wanting to shoot. I just like to shoot down these false narratives that exist in boxing or, or these just fake beefs. Like, they don't be even that. You know what I'm saying? Them dudes don't hate each other. You know, they, they, they don't. I don't care what they say out their mouth. I know what time it is. David Morrell in September. Yeah, man, look. He's claiming 
that they signed, they got contracts signed for, I think he said Andre, Morel, and Charlo already. This is what they saying, man. Say they want no tune up. He did say that. He did say it, Ghost. I know I'm aware. I'm I'm hit. I'm hit. Yeah, you know what I mean? And it might not be smart. Two years out the ring is real. Can't for a while in shape. Salute to Miss Joette. How you feeling, Queen? Appreciate you stopping through. Give me Danny Jacobs versus Jamal. I still watch that. It's tuned for make him the inner champion. Make it dumb is the primary and his, and his tuna make vacation simple. Fit weird with the sound, or is it just me? Can y'all hear? Is my sound my sound messed up? Can y'all hear me okay out there? But look, man, it's more than it's more than one way. To, it's more than one way to get things done, right? And um. I'm just realistic about about his options. Like I hear what he say, right? And again, I'm not against what he is saying, but I I, I just have a I have an understanding that I know they're gonna come a different way with it. I know they're going, they're not gonna. I appreciate y'all, appreciate y'all. I know they're not gonna just throw him right back in there like that, and it just won't make sense. It will be very brief, very brief, but it just won't make a lot of sense career wise. Like you didn't get that far to start just being dumb. Get what I'm saying? So I always consider that. And when, when Charlo says something like, you know, no tune ups, I just get right back in there. That's the competitor in her in him. People just have to understand that that is the competitor in him. Undeniably, like if I think if he if push came to shove and that's what was on the table and he had his way to just go right back into the fire, maybe he would just do that. But what I'm saying, y'all just consider they have a team for a reason and the team ain't going to just throw him in there and be stupid about it. You get what I'm saying? They've had three fights there, which is 100% done. He has no business club chasing Canelo. Yeah, but see, at this point, though, Ghost, um, I get you. But at this point, I don't think it's cloud chasing, right? I think it's still, he just letting you know, still and all, that that's a plan of his. That's a fight that he would want, right? It ain't cloud chasing simply because he's fought every fight that he was supposed to fight, according to them, to get that fight. You get what I'm saying? So it's like they still, that's the carrot that they still dangling over his head that he unfortunately can't get to. So, I think I like David Benavidez's approach and his father. If they can't get him in the ring, can, which is Canelo, then they go ahead and get the rest of the guys that are good, that's quality, that have a name. And that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? So I just want to see it. I want to see the fights, man. Andrew Macon versus Charlo. Tune up for both. Hey, look, they talked about it, Ghost. So again, man, um, they did talk about it, yo. So let me see something real quick. He said it. He said he spoke to Buddy. So let me take this off. Yeah. He said he spoke to him. So that's all. Look, we go right out of his mouth, right? He don't want no tune up. This is what he said. This is where Ghost is coming from. So I get you. We could go right off of what he said, right? Video. Right. This is what he want. I ain't protecting him from it again, but I'm just more realistic about it. And again, it, sometimes people are not. They hear this fighter say one thing and they expect that he just get thrown right in there. But in reality, we if you just know any better, that's not what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? That's not the likelihood of what's going to happen. Oh, shit. My bad, y'all. Not that. I didn't mean to put that one up. That was Ryan Garcia and uh, Tank Mom embracing. I thought that was dope for the sport. That was dope to see, too, though. Let's see. Canelo ain't fighting no more top guys. Canelo, hey, he going to be he going to get forced to where he going to push himself right out of boxing, bro. Man, hold on, y'all. He gonna push himself right out of the box. I'm just coming from what his team said. Ronnie Shields, Charlo contradict. Yeah, but that, that I think all fighters contradict themselves to to some degree. To be honest, you know what I'm saying. And I, that's what I was just trying to explain a little bit, and not trying to give him an out, but just being realistic, like contradicting. Right? He's saying no tune ups, right? But then he'll come back and have a tune up. So people will be like, he contradicted himself there, right? And that that's understandable. But I'm just saying. I, I understand how that how a contradiction like that can take shape. I don't think it's the fighter not really willing to stand on business. I think it's 
he's saying one thing and he's speaking as an individual when he say no tune-ups and i'll go right back in there he's speaking from a competitor that's his that's the fighter spirit speaking right but in reality we all know that decision is going to be made with him and his team that's all i'm going with you get what i'm saying that's where i'm going with it so it's nothing wrong with nobody um holding him to what he said because i heard him i heard him clear what he said you know what i'm saying but uh i'm just trying to explain a little bit why i think that would end up a contradiction would end up taking place because again he's speaking as an individual but that's going to be a team thing when at, when it's all said and done they're going to sit down with his team like any other fighter and they're going to discuss it and they're going to come up with an opponent that makes sense based on i think the amount of time that he's spent out the, outside the ring i think that just makes sense naturally right but you're going to have some pushback from it because people are going to be like well he said no tune-ups so i understand all that but i ain't here to be uh like unrealistic about it that man needed tune up you know what i'm saying especially if he was dealing with the, the things that he been dealing with period are the things that people been saying he was dealing with a tune-up is necessary bro a tune-up is definitely necessary for, for charlo and it's like again um damn i mean no no slight to um demon nicholson in no way shape or form you see andre fought him right he ain't come back and fight no absolute killer that was for a reason get what i'm saying i don't think it was a lack of belief in him or anything like that I just think that uh, Demond Nicholson made more sense in terms of Demetrius Andre being out the ring, inactivity, um, going to a new weight class, things of that nature, right? You know what I mean? Being an in-house fight, an easy fight to make. So um, it's the reasons why that took place. But this is Charlo right here, y'all. So it's so like the man called Demetrius. Yeah, yeah, we're going to talk about this. Said they ain't talk yet. He would call Demetrius back. To see the issue. Yeah. See you in a fight like this. In a this is the part we like. Want. Maybe we get uh, Demetrius Andrade. He called me the other day. I already called him back. Um, but he called me the other day. He talked for like an hour about like you know just hour. trying to get this shit done. I like that fight. Yeah. You like it? Uh, yeah. So y'all heard it first. What do you think? Right, 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 right. Huh? I'll go straight into it. Now I just played that real quick for a reason. And I get that, right? Because I'm aware of what he said. He goes straight into it. But we all know, like we all know, it just don't go like that, right? And again, that's when the when these fighters got he won't be the first one to contradict himself. Again, it's deeper than that, right? Because we know right here in this moment, he's speaking as a fighter, the competitor spirit. Uh, yeah, I fight him. Yeah, no tune-ups. He's saying all the stuff you would think you would want a fighter to say, but in reality, what I'm saying is. That's a single man's train of thought right there. That's the fighter's train of thought. When he go and sit down with his team, I'm pretty sure they're not going to share that same train of thought. You know what? No tune-ups. Go straight into it. I'm pretty sure they're not going to share that train of thought. So what's going to end up happening is he's going to listen to what his team is saying, and his team is probably going to inform him or, or, you know what I mean, uh, put, you know, tell him basically what it is. You need to tune up. You need to get your feet back wet first, man. Don't play with it, man. Maybe after one fight, then you ready, but at least give yourself that. See how you look, and then go straight for it. I don't see what the issue is with that, unless you're just in a rush to hopefully see him lose. Only only way I can see a person really having an issue with him taking a, a, a soft touch, as they put it, or a tune-up fight, however you want to phrase it, after almost pretty much two years, is if you're in a rush to see him lose. Get what I'm saying? Or let me try to be fair. Or if you just gonna hold him to what he said right here, right in this instant, get what I'm saying. Either way, nobody's wrong. If you if you understand that realistically, the man need to tune up after two years out the ring, then cool, get let him get that. But if you be like, nah, you know what? He said this. I'm on his ass. Then 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 ride with it. it it's no wrong approach here. But I'm just saying, I'm being more realistic. I think when I say. He's speaking like a fighter. You know what I'm saying? He's speaking like a fighter, and he's saying the things you think a fighter would say. You get what I'm saying? Or supposed to say. You get what I'm saying? It's like bravado. But we all know, you know what I mean? That only gets you so far. So you don't – Charlo ain't get to where he was at being dumb is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So – and he got Ronnie Shields. Ronnie Shields ain't going to allow him to make a move, I think, that's dumb, and that's just not going to be smart for him. You get what I'm saying? For when he came back due to weight, it had nothing to do with the time off. Man, look, I'm a that's that's your opinion. To me, it, it definitely has something to do with the time off. It definitely has something to do with the time off. And then you one could argue even opponents before then wasn't exactly no killers either. So it's like I don't want to have a wrong conversation here. At the end of the day, to me, 
in my opinion, Demetrius Andre fought who he fought because it was a combination of things. Maybe that wasn't just the only reason, but it was one of them. Ain't nobody going to convince me that the reason it, his layoff had nothing to do with his opponent. It's, I'm just not going to believe that. That logically don't make sense to me. This is why he ain't go, go get an exact killer. You know what I mean, or we're going to see what he get from here. I mean, so Johnny Q, my bro, what's good with it? Do what they want. That's that's true. He did. He did. He did. And again, man, I'm not defending nobody else what nobody else had an issue with. Just do had a channel for a little over a year. So a lot of these fights that we speak on, I ain't have an opinion on it publicly. So I'm not about to defend other people's talking points. And we ain't doing that today. Hell no. I think I think want to see them to lose two years out the ring. They mad about a tune up. Right. That's all I'm saying, Mike. And it is again, I, I can't. I don't have all the answers. I'm never going to talk like I do, but I just always speak from a, a place of logic and reason, right? Realistically, he, I just don't see it. It sound cool, good, throw him in the fire, but realistically, what's going to end up happening? He's going to end up with a tune-up, and then people going to be mad at that. Well, let him be mad. All I'm saying is he wouldn't be the only guy fighting a tune-up off a of layoff. Uh, it, regardless of how it, how it played out, regardless of the reason, the end of the day, he wouldn't be the only guy that fought a tune-up on a layoff, and he need one, unless people just in a rush to see him lose. That's all the only thing I could see. Grease with fire was good with it. Said the only time I seen Charlo Grease to anyone was his father. I agree with you, but I know what Ronnie said too, right? And again, it's it's no wrong answer. For me, I'm just going off of what I think logically is going to take place. Now, I could be wrong, but I, again, I, I, I don't think I'm too far off the mark for thinking that realistically this dude gonna end up with a tune up regardless of what he's saying right now and he probably gonna be the one that won it you know what i'm saying you want to tune up same thing you expected from others get that man dom's the belt i don't know why you keep making it yo that's not happening bro like i don't i don't know what you're on but ain't no who why give him the belt why Give him the belt. Why? Because he wanted to tune up. I ain't giving nobody no belt, man. I ain't giving nobody no belt, bro. I ain't giving a dude a belt. If Adamas want the belt, he going to get it, right? With beating people ass, right? They can't, they can only slow, they can only slow down what's in store for Adamas. They can't deny what's written for him, right? Right? You know what I mean? I, ain't nobody giving that man a belt. I know that's your man, but that, that's, that, that's not realistic at all. He's not going to just give him his belt. Cause somebody just said so like you know what i mean defending this belt he gonna defend it against a tuna that's the the belt will be on the line more than likely i'm sure charlie and, and ej he better better get a tune up and jones was good with it mike biggs boxing was good with it my bro how you feeling and again man look it, it this is the thing man it's no one way to get to, to go about this business. It's a number of ways that this this can go, but I'm not stuck on it going any one way. I'm realistic. That man been out the ring. He done dealt with all types of issues from what I'm hearing. I think it's just realistic. I don't care about no damn belt. I don't know if he, he do. Maybe he do because he earned it, right? But I'm not really, I don't care about the belt. I care about seeing Charlo win as an individual. And um, I don't think, Throwing them right back in there with top tier talent after two years is a, a recipe for for success. That's just my thoughts. Now, if people want to be keep saying what EJ did and how EJ move and whatever the case, have at it. But for me, I'm just being more realistic. The dude been out. He gonna need some. He gonna need a fight or two to get back and uh, see what see what he got. If not, then he he might be susceptible to a loss coming right back. Kello, what's good with it, my bro? How you feeling? Appreciate you pulling up. Down is to pass himself in position and earn a shot. That's why he's not going the same rules. I don't know about all that. I just ain't I ain't getting into all the like the I don't know. That's I guess that's the politics of it. You know what I'm saying? That I don't particularly care for. I'm not really making a case for Charlo keeping his belt. I don't care about that. Like I said before, for me, I just root for the man in a different way. If he did somebody want the belt, have at it. Won't they make a case? Won't they complain? Won't they go do something? Won't they somebody call him out, beat him up, do something? I don't care about no belt. Again, when it pertains to Charlo, for me, I just got a different outlook on it, man. I know the dude done dealt with some things, and he need to go get, get himself right. And if he has gotten himself right, then he should be back in June, like we said. 
as far as all the belt go. I don't care. Give it, give it away. Keep the belt. Defend the belt. But I just know, get yourself back right and don't be stupid about it. You know what I'm saying? Don't be stupid about it. Because as it stood, the man ain't like nobody whooped his ass in the ring and took the belt. You get what I'm saying? So I understand him still wanting to hold on to it. You know what I mean? And again, injuries. And it's a lot of things that just ain't planned in, in, in a career that could take place. Right? And... One of the one of the reasons why I'm not an advocate for him not having his belt, and I, I don't really make too much about it, whether he have it or not, right? Because finally, when it's a fighter that's usually on a coincidental list that get a break, I'm not gonna be the one advocating for him not to get that break that I've seen so many others get. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like that's how I look at that. So it's like whatever. And you know the WBC, right? They rules as they go along. Thrill Hill was good with it, Brody. So you're trying to fight Andre. That's what he said. He said they talked on the phone. I, I like to hear it, man. And, and just fight him. You get what I'm saying? Calling people out is one thing. Like, we got a bunch of people calling people out. Look, but let's make this stuff realistic. Get what I'm saying? Like, three, four people could be calling you out. Is that realistic? How you going to fight them all? You know what I mean? Like, calling somebody name. I'm not impressed by nobody saying that. Fight somebody. Calling them out. Do something about it. Uh, that it actually move the needle. Not just saying I'll fight him. I'm past that. Like, I'm past. That go for every fighter, man. If you really want to fight some, get on the line with him, like Charlo and Andre. I'm going to use them as an example. If people really want to fight, get on the line like Charlo and Andre. Jim, what's good with it, my bro? How you feeling? Appreciate you pulling up. Mm -hmm. So that boo-boo might be a, a tune-up. I mean, look, if he really willing, Kurt, throw him in there. I like boo-boo and I like Charlo. Throw him in there, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They think they might think so too, yo. They might think so. Salute to my bro, Jim, man. They've been sending the paperwork for the four years. They're supposed to pull up and fight him in the streets. Man, look, man, ghosts. You notice how, like, you you got all this extra information about paperwork, and I, I can't attest to all of that stuff. I can't. I can't. I can't attest to all that. I can't attest to what he turned down, what he didn't turn down. All I'm saying is people got to be realistic about their call outs. All this, they've been sending paperwork. I mean, I don't know about none of that. I have no knowledge of that. Again, a lot of this stuff, I'm going off of the year I've been here. I'm know what I'm saying I'm not trying to go back and, and, and justify all the stuff that happened before I got here. I'm just, I'm here now. <laughs> all I'm focusing on is the now. I don't know who's sending what paperwork. I don't know how all that go, man. I just, that shit sound just, it just sound too good. It just sounds too good to be true. So all of a sudden, everybody's calling out Charlo. They've been calling him out for four years. Everybody's sending him the paperwork. He's just turning down all these fights, and he ain't trying to fight none of these people. That's the story. I, I just don't know. I mean, look, I just don't want to go too far off of what, the reason I'm even bringing Charlo up. And again, man, I don't have a personal feelings toward Charlo. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I don't, I'm not advocating for his belt to be, him to be stripped of his belt and all this stuff. I want to see him fight the best possible people after he get himself a tune-up fight because I think that's what's realistically coming down the pipe. You get what I'm saying? I can't stress that enough. I can be wrong as hell, but I think more than likely that's what's going to happen. Now, what they're going to do with his belt situation, that's on them. I really don't care about it because the way that they write these rules up and the way people make and break rules as they go along, I, I can't really, I, I don't really get into it. It's, a, it's stressful for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's where I'm at, bro. Just make the fight. You know what I'm saying? Y'all talk to each other. Realistically, Charlo, you know you're going to get a tune-up. Go on there and get you a tune-up, bro, and go for that smoke like you said. You said you want Andre. You'll fight him. You said you'll fight Benavidez. Let's see it. Like, I, I, I don't care. I'm not protecting them, but I'm just saying a realistic scenario. All this other stuff, I, I can't attest for that. They, The WBC came out and said he was their champion. They, they're not stripping them, so that's dead. Like, you um, know what I'm saying? It's just like next next up. Now, what's the next order of business? The next order of business is Charlo getting his ass back in the ring where he ain't been in two years, where he definitely need to be if he's trying to compete with the top dog, especially if he's thinking about going to 68. You know what I mean? It's real smoke for him, so he better get himself right. Like, that's where I'm I'm advocating for that, because I want to actually see the dude win. Ashley's Corner, what's good, Cuzzo? How you feeling? Appreciate you. Safe travels, safe travels, man, and eat good over there. Eat something for me, too, because I be starving. I be starving. Boxing's built off clout, always been. 
before it was called clout they had to build fights same way yeah some of it is necessary you need to you need that's how you generate buzz and interest in a fight you 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 talk a little bit of trash you know what i mean I mean, 35 getting back-to-back injuries and been fighting through an activities perfect time to fight him yeah why not fight him back to back back in the ring soon that's the main thing right that's all i'm saying and then from there sort the rest of the stuff out that's all i'm saying i ain't making no excuses for him but realistically i'm just going with what i think is the possibility jj salute fan appreciate you pulling up they're gonna get that man to tune up and then from there i demand that he go after the smoke like he said right that sound fair enough is real if it ain't fair then it's realistic because you know boxing ain't about being fair it's never been fair but let's at least be realistic that man gonna get a tune up i don't care what he's saying <laughs> he getting a tune up you know what i'm saying and after that cool demand that he get in there with everybody and i'm cool with that you know what i'm saying i'm cool with it <laughs> i'm cool with it. i'm cool with him getting in there now if if he's cool with it but i'm just again i'm exploring the more realistic possibility they're not just gonna uh toss him to the wolves like that unfortunately that's just not gonna be the case <laughs> yeah that's why I want to see two girls. I've been saying that they called him Doodle Andre. I just want to see somebody go in there and beat this dude up. They've been telling me this dude, or, or you know, Canelo been trying to convince people Andre they ain't been good for years, man. Will somebody please beat him up? He 35, he, he old, he looked like crap his last fight, even though he won every round. Like, come on, beat him up. That I got, I'm with you, beat him up. The same thing with Charlo, though, you know what I'm saying? They biggest challenges came outside the ring. They need to go ahead and get that business squared away. You know what I'm saying? Man, Morel is special. Morel is different. Morel is a special uh, uh talent, man. Seriously. Seriously. And um, again, I, I should go try to find a clip. But for the people that's pushing that um David Morel and Benavidez shouldn't happen, David Benavidez don't feel that way. David Benavidez don't feel like he should let the fight marinate. He feel like everybody's ready right now and they should fight. You get what I'm saying? I just want to throw that out there. So for people that be saying that Benavidez ain't uh, uh ain't sharing the same sentiments. And he more than willing to fight Morel, as he just stated the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he, yeah, if they feel like that, uh 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 Kurt, I'm with it. Ant McQueen, what's good with it, Brody? He said you fight with nobody. Yeah, you know Canelo. No, nah, Canelo is the best defensive boxer above 135, aka the worst boxer in history versus Jamal to smoke Charlo. But see, they don't know that, Ghost. They ain't gonna know that with them numbers. They ain't gonna know that how good he is defensively because they ain't gonna check because they don't like him. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's cool to not be a hater. It's cool to be a supporter of the entire sport and rock with all fighters. You know what I'm saying? Especially at the Demond Nicholson fight. Somebody just said it right, right. You know what I'm saying Morel about to shake up that division. He absolutely is, Jim. And if he has sounded a little shaky too, people saying it. Favorite fighter about to lose to a nine and no fighter. Hey man, they're gonna have to give him that smoke ghost. They said he said he won it. They saying he want they won it. Look, man, he spoke on it. He said they ain't got it. They asked him about marinating. And he said, nah. He said people ready, ready right now, man. So again, I just want to see it, man. I want to see it. His father said it. He called out Benavidez. I just want to see what that lead to as well, man. I, I, I want to see all these fights. That's all. I'm just realistic about how some of them not just going to happen because we want them, right? Get what I'm saying? Benavidez is the only one in 68 with a chance against Morel Duncan, including Canelo. Yeah, man. Listen, I really think highly of David Morel, and I think he on to something, man. I think that we got a special talent with this dude. Nine fights are due to wish. Yeah, man. Nine fights, he looking like him right now. You can't lie and say he don't. Right now he is. David Benavidez should have stepped in the ring after the David Morrell Jr. fight. That would have been dope. Yeah, they not they not paying attention, Ghost. They just clearly hate. And I don't understand. Morrell is an easy dude to like, yeah. He's an easy dude to root for. He's an easy dude to root for. He wants the smoke. He getting there. He's an improved fighter. He improved each time out. 
He looked devastated. His punches look like they got real weight behind him. He's mean and nasty in there. He don't want to just, as a Cuban fighter with that style, he don't want to just move around the ring and outpoint you. He want to hurt you and knock you out. That's impressive, yo. He's 9-0. He's beating people ass, and it's not even close. It's not even close. It's not It's, it's not too much to hate on when it comes to no David Morrell, unless you just being weird, bro. The greatest Rocky Marciano. What's good? What they said? Josh Taylor's going to beat that boy up. We're going to get into that, too, man. I'm a Josh Taylor jumped on the last damn podcast and he talked about that so we're gonna we're gonna play we're gonna play that um that bill from them too morel is ready absolutely you get what i'm saying kurt he is ready go look at his resume bro better yet just look at what he's doing to these people in the ring is it's not just the level of opposition it's how he's beating these dudes it's not even close he beat the hell out of falco saturday man he trashed this dude bro he got the energy right man he got a crazy highlight rail knockout face first you know what I'm saying? Thrill Hill was good. What he said? How can Billy be flying under the radar? You know, he imaginarily flying under the radar. They know he there. They know he there. They just know it's a problem. That's a young animal, man. People ain't going to fight him unless they have to. That's the problem he going to run into. People not going to fight him unless they have to. That's the way I see that, at least for right now, with him, Billy. Yeah, he beat him so he beat him easy, didn't he, Jim? Pounded on that kid, man. He pounded on Falco. He made him look like nothing. He just walked right through him, bro. I take Boo Boo versus Morel. Look, I take all these fight tough fight for these guys. I'm telling you, Morel's a tough out for dudes, man. He got he got a lot, he got a lot going for him, man. It is what it is. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nah, he did. He did. He did look for him. He did look for him. He did. But I, I can't wait to see it, man. Ronnie Shiz is compared to Pernell and Vander. Called him all the time. Great talent. Y'all going to see that, why very soon. Yeah, that's high praise by Benavidez and one boo, though. <laughs> yeah, you know D, man. You know D. You know what it is. You know he one of them ones. I was trying to think of Buddy's name. I just seen the YouTube video. Samson saying it. Done. Falco probably still in the house. So I'm telling you. And Billy at what well, weight? I think he has 68 undercard. Uh, and Billy has 68, if I'm not mistaken. Morel needs to push Benavidez back. Absolutely, if because he's dangerous coming forward. That if you if we being honest, he, or he's his most effective and dangerous when he's coming forward. Uh, that, that is David Benavidez. You know what I mean? If you can freeze him up and force him back, like Rose just saying, yeah, yeah, you can have your success. Falco won an Olympic medal at light heavyweight too. So you know Morel is strong. I'm telling you, Aunt. I'm telling you, bro. Oh, Jose was saying that too. I'm playing promo. They got three fight deal. I'm telling you, D1. Look, we've been hearing it. Like he keep doubling down on it. Don't do boo boo like that. Boo boo, boo boo would have had um, boo boo um. Boo Boo know how to handle itself in there, though. I know what y'all saying, but Boo Boo know how to handle itself. I won't be necessarily uh, scared for him in there. That'd be a tough fight, though, because Morel, I'm telling you, he's a mean Cuban-style fighter, man. He's the new age of Cuban-style fighting, man. David Morel comes in there to hurt you. He don't want to dance around for 12 rounds. He don't want to outpoint you. He don't want to go into the scorecards. He don't, and he don't play with his food. People be thinking, nah, he don't play. Man, yo, he smashed Falco. They could have stopped that fight a little bit earlier if they wanted to, yeah. They really could have. Yo, he was beating that boy ass, man. Quick. Quick. That took shape fast, man. He ain't waste no time pounding on that kid. He ain't waste no time. And that's what I'm saying. We can't keep saying people are fighting nobody. It's time to it's time to at least say that the guys that are winning and beating these so-called nobodies are some special talents because Morel is one of them. I'm telling you right now, he one of them. That's why you got people like Benavidez, uh Jose Benavidez Sr. saying mentioning his name. This is why he mentioning him at eight and no. They've been mentioning for a while. They know what time it is, bro. That dude really could fight. I'm telling you, he one of them ones. Yo, I'm telling you, facts D1. Facts. Morel gonna sleep with a counter, yo. Ghost, man. He got some sneaky power, and they can't tell me he ain't. He don't, yo. They can't lie and say he don't. It's a Ronnie Shield effect, honestly. I like Ronnie Shields. People been giving him some slack lately. Some flack, slack, both. 
maybe three rounds before he drops and break the body down the fourth stop him in the fifth i swear it goes i want to see that fight asap bro asap asap salute to my bro mike kirk and putting that cover in the chat much love and appreciation bro you think Reverse benavidez too soon business reason i think the pvc is gonna start between them um i mean possibly from that angle from a business angle right if somebody is looking to protect their investment on either side respectfully right i'm gonna try to answer that the best way i could for me i think people on either side it's a possibility that they can consider that and try to protect said investment and not be willing to make the fight but at the same time i do think it's a chance that people could be like you know what this is what the people want you know what i mean maybe because you know so every now and then we do get something we want right so it's like um from a business standpoint maybe the powers that be could be looking at it like that maybe they want to protect one or the other from the other or or let it marinate so to speak but for us and for me and just looking at the quality that uh you know david morell has fought already in them nine fights and how he's dealt with that 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 opposition that right there and what I'm saying in the ring tells me that physically right now he's ready to get in there with a challenge like that dude. Nobody's going to convince me from what I've seen in them 26 Benavidez fights and them nine David Morrell fights that he can't get in there and hang with that dude and beat him, possibly. You know what I'm saying? I really believe that. You know what I'm saying? Salute to my bro, Mike Kirkland. Much love and appreciation, bro. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, well, well. I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time different. for yeah. you to get your just do. Salute to Mike Kirkman. Much love and appreciation. The power of making fights with all the top names. Both of them guys want to get paid and they're following. Just doesn't justify it. Right. Right. That that's a factor too, D1. You're right on with that, yo. You're going to sit back and sleep him with a counter. I was sleeping with a left on the exchange. I was way faster than Benavidez, yo. And the thing is, go see. Dude ain't just fast, he quick too. You got like quick twitch muscles, like he's fast. Like you see how Tank is? Didn't I tell now, now not to not to switch this to the Davis Garcia show, but didn't I tell people Tank was a complete athlete and that alone was gonna give Ryan Garcia trouble? Man, people don't be listening. I, I'm one thing I could assure y'all up here for everybody in the building, y'all punch that like button. It's, I don't sit up here like I got all the answers, but I promise you, the stuff that I do speak on, I don't be just sitting up here talking. Then I tell people Tank being a complete athlete will give Ryan Garcia issues. He's a complete athlete, not just fast from the waist up with fast hands. Not just that. He fast, period. He fast and he quick. He in and out. Do you see his feints? Do you see how Ryan Garcia started bite, biting to every feint? You see how fast Tank really eat like a cat. Good luck, yeah. Good luck. All them people just count him out. If you count him out against anybody that he fight, good luck. Good luck, man. Just blessings to you, bro. Blessings to you. Because that's a lot to deal with. The haters ain't going to tell you that. But that dude like a cat in the ring, man. So all this, people are just get in there and just out boxing with ease, man. Show me. I, I swear I can't wait to the day I see it. So I could be like, all right, people was right. You know what I'm saying? Dave versus David, fight of the year for sure. Facts. That race is seen compared to when Rails a young Roy Jones Jr., man. He's very athletic, bro, and comfortable in the ring. Young and they could run it back. Talk to him. Thrill, they could, bro. They could. We ain't making no excuses why these fights can't happen. That's about the only thing he does better. And that might, and that could backfire in the fight against Morel because his shot placement and the angles that he throws some of his punches on, woof. He's sneaky in there, man. Can't wait to victim you got nine fights i'm telling you bro I'm telling you d1 but go look go but go look at the resume of the nine fights d1 you you would be even more a little impressed if you don't already know if you're not familiar with it just go look at the guys he don't fight guys with losing records like you know how those guys coming up you be fighting dudes be you know six and 38 and four and 26 and all that nah he fighting dudes with winning records that stuff matters it's pedigree right out the gate i think in like his third a four pro fight, he fought like a 12 rounder. He different. He is different. He is very different. <laughs> he said, I never heard you say that. <laughs> Sante, uh, what's good with it, bro? Appreciate you pulling up. But yeah, I did tell people Ryan was clueless, and I told people tank tank athleticism alone was gonna be a problem. 
and, and again, I said he's probably going to be trying to press the fight. And the Tank is going to do what Tank do. He's going to make you, all right, you're going to come forward, but you can't box how I can box. Your feet can't match my feet, and I'm going to make you show it. I'm going to show this. I'm going to exploit it. And then, then look how the dynamic of the fight changed and Tank start going forward, yo. You can't, <laughs> yo, whatever, man. You can't tell me you don't love just watching that, yo. It's just like he went from being, elusive and hard to hit to being on the front foot to backing down his prey to cracking him with the body shot that ended the fight man impressive man impressive the way he gets his 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 job done with so few punches man i've never been impressed more with a guy that throws few punches at tank i've never in my life just got to give him credit and again it's no shame in me giving any of these fighters they credit because that's what just do all about it's nothing more impressive than seeing a guy that throw that few punches and be that exciting to me. Like I never seen another fighter that I could think could do that. Yeah. I just, I can't, I can't think of one. I can't think of one. And it's that exciting because when he do hit you, it always count and it hurt. Get what I'm saying? It hurts. So it was like, that's just impressive, man. I enjoyed it, man. And again, Morel got the, the people going like with that face down face first knockout, like, and salute to Falco. He tried, but he was way overmatched, man. Morel's just on a totally different, Yo, I'm telling you, and when Calvin Ford be telling him that, yo, when Calvin Ford be telling him, I'm telling you, bro, that was a master class right there, master class. Right, it is. It is. It's the truest of 50-50 fights because you got the purest of boxers and then Tank, you got the best of the boxer punchers. Tank ain't just a puncher. It's a boxer puncher that can fight and box. That's what makes him dangerous, man. I, I keep, I ain't about to get all into it, y'all. <laughs> I ain't about to get it done. Just know this. Any fighter that can box at a high level and fight at a high level is very, very dangerous. It's going to be hard to beat, especially when they got dynamite. That's all I'm going to say. Right, right, D1. We got to get rid of these dudes, man. These scumbags, man. Hey, man. I mean, I think he's painted as one, bro. I think he's painted as one, to be honest, um, Rocky. I think he's painted as one, bro. I, th I think the fact that he's he's a high-profile athlete, his mistakes are magnified. He's not above mistakes, right? But I think they're magnified, just like any other athlete. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you got certain names attached to you. You know what I'm saying? That far from perfect, far from it. But I, I just don't think it's the monster that they, they want him to look like. You know what I'm saying? Because they got to find a chink somewhere. They can't find it on the record. You know what I'm saying? So they, they dig a little deeper. Change transition from defense to offense is the truth. I didn't know it was that good. I'm going to be honest with y'all. And I just learned something else. I didn't know it was that good. Now, I watched your core transition from offense to defense and vice versa very well. But I didn't know Tanks can do that that well, too. I knew he can do it well. But, no, he can do it very well. And that's concerning for anybody else. Man, I'm telling you, man, I just didn't know that. I ain't know it was that at that level, bro. Orlando, salute to you, family. Who wins between Tank and Shakur? Put me on the spot, will you? I'll say this. That's a true 50-50, like bro said, if I ever seen one. And just because I'm just doing, I, I like to be fair, and I ain't being biased because Shakur is my guy, right? The best way I can answer that. You know what I'm saying? We definitely don't know until they get in there, right? I could easily lean towards Shakur, right? I could easily lean towards Tank. But that kind of fight right there, that's when I remove my fanship aside and my personal feelings. And I look at fighter in the red corner, fighter in the blue corner, whichever one they may be, right? And I say, based on what I see when it's Shakur, that's one of the best pure boxers we got in the sport. And one of the hardest to hit fighters that, that we have in the sport. And then you got Tank, that's one of the hardest hitting punches that we have in the sport. This one of the most underrated fighters altogether and boxers in the sport. Give them saying, and you got the best of both worlds, man. You got that pure boxer that can be mean in there when he need to be, but you got to be smart about being mean when you're in there with Tank. Then you got a guy that can shut your lights out at any given time and box with anybody you put him in there with. That's that's dangerous. So I feel like if it's anybody that could avoid that power enough for a fight for a 12 round duration and possibly win a decision fight, Shakur, in my opinion, has the best chance to do that. If there's anybody that could crack the code, that is Shakur Stevenson's defense and possibly penetrate his defense enough to get him out of there and knock him out and beat him, I think that's Tank Davis. That's why I think that truly makes that a 50-50 fight because 
you you see the avenues of victory for each one is and it'd be hard either way but you see it being i see them being each other's toughest fight too i see that so i say like it's so many layers to that fight that makes it a true 50 50 and it's it, it get deep when it's them you get what i'm saying you got two dudes that don't know how to lose don't want to lose you know what i'm saying shakur ain't lost since that olympic <laughs> loss you get what i'm saying and he ain't you know he ain't trying to lose so that is one of the most truest 50 50 fights you will ever see ever penitentiary rules and effects shank and livers i'm telling you d1 six punches in the second round landing three which one of those put ryan down i'm telling you the efficiency behind them punches is different man world class y'all world class man my bad me speed up y'all this punch output it makes no sense it's exciting how exciting it is to not throw that many punches it's crazy movement is underrated i'm trying to tell people he a cat he an athlete that athleticism he got true athleticism he's a true athlete with athleticism ryan is an athlete with some athleticism notice i didn't say true athlete because he ain't true nah, nah. tank was an athlete like tank would have been better in multiple other sports you could just tell that ryan not so much you know what i'm saying if that makes sense Hurt folks with, yeah, man. Right, and here exactly goes. He don't. He still be getting a desired result, knocking dudes out their shoes, man. But anything is jazz. It's crazy. Any fans fear that fight, and I don't know why though, because you know what? Just and and that's just for the ones that do, because they ain't going to admit it, Rosia. But not everybody, right? Not all the Haney fans, and I'm a Haney supporter as well, y'all. So don't ever get it confused. But I will say this to the ones that are outright diehard Devin Haney fans. If you are scared to the point to see him in a fight with anybody, like anybody at all, then you are not a true fan of him because that means you don't truly believe in his talent. The reason why I would want to see Shakur in there with a Haney or 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 Javante Davis or Frank Martin or whoever, knowing how dangerous those fights would be, because I believe in his talent. I believe that he got what it take to pull the fight off, or at least give us one of the best fights we'll ever see. That's being a true supporter, really believing in the man's skill set and talent to go in there and beat anybody. And that's that's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? No matter how tough the task. Right? He can he can box with them, but they can't fight with him, D1. And that's gonna be the problem. Mm-hmm. You feel me, Mike? I'm I'm the most non-biased when it comes to them. That's as real as it comes. That is the true, that is the epitome of 50-50. That fight for, for those reasons I mentioned, even more so than the Devin Haney fight. I promise y'all, no disrespect to Haney. It's for the elements that are in that fight. When you combine those two fighters that are Tank Davis and Shakur Stevenson, I think you that is the epitome of the 50-50 fight. That is that is the 50-50 fight of that lightweight division, for real, for real. You ain't got to worry about a one being too growing out of the weight class. He ain't going to be weak, drain, none of that. You get what I'm saying? Follow me, y'all. I ain't saying Devin Haney and Tank Davis ain't a true 50-50 fight because of skill or nothing like that. I'm just saying as it stands, I think the longer he sticks around, the more he depletes himself, the more dangerous it is. I'm just being logical and realistic, right? So I think the longer he sticks around, and if he even thinking about fighting Tank Davis at 35, I think the risk factor is a lot higher the longer he stays there, right? But with Shakur Stevenson being that him outgrowing the weight class is not an issue, that allows that fight to be even more of a 50-50 because he won't be depleted. Tank will be at his best. Shakur will be at his best. Do you get what I'm saying? This is no slight to Devin Haney or his skill set. This is just me observing something and seeing what's real. If he's depleting himself, there's no way he's 100% of himself going into that ring, and it would be very dangerous to do that against Tank. Whereas in Shakur's case, he just got there. So he's better off to fight a guy that dangerous, knowing that he ain't physically depleted at the weight class. You know what I'm saying? I'm score like that. Right, right. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to make it hard for sure. Grind Hard Sports Nation, what's good, family? Santel, what's good with it? Flawless mentality. Salute to the OG, Dr. Mark. How you feeling today? What about Tank versus Frank Martin? Kurt, I love that fight too. But respectfully, respectfully, yeah. Uh, no people probably don't you know listen that's a good fight it's a 50 50 ish type fight too for sure frank martin is the truth he the goods 
Yeah, everything then it's the safe travels d free on that road man he he he, he the man and then some bro but um i gotta see more to feel like he'll beat tank if that's fair like i know he has the tools the skill set the discipline the coach the training he's in shape all of those things like he got all the physical tools and everything but i still want to see a bit more before i say he'll be the tank davis as it stands right now they fighting tomorrow. I got Tank knocking him out. I got that being a very competitive fight, but I got Tank figuring it out, and I got Tank knocking him out. Respectfully, I just need to see more. I've seen Tank time and time and time and time and time again. That matters to me. Like, I've seen him prove it so many times over and over in, in the different ways, all resulting in knockouts, but just different facets and different ways to get a guy out of there, and it's so impressive to me. It's just real shit. Frank Martin will be a tough task for anybody, and he has the tools to beat anybody on the any given day with the right game plan and execution. Anybody. Like, I want to be very clear about that. Nobody is going to get in there with Frank Martin, in my honest opinion, and walk through him right now at 35, right? But if you're asking me who, who I'm picking or leaning towards, if him and Tank was the fight, I, simply because of the reasons I stated, he's proved it. I've seen him prove it more times. I just – naturally just want to see more frank martin and he got the goods even with with that being said he has the goods right now to beat anybody at the weight class you get what i'm saying sorry salute family appreciate you pulling up no notification i know how to or did you get it salute to you brody salute to dr mark as far as competitive i think tank probably the biggest fight in boxing right me too mm-hmm mm-hmm right ash and that's just me being fair to dev whether people know it or not that's not me slighting his skill set now if the fight is at 140 or something say hypothetically if he's fighting tank at 140 now okay that's definitely your, your 50 50 type fight but if he's fighting him at 135 from where he's at now i don't think it's a 50 50 fight i think it's less of a 50 50 fight for for that reason not much but by much but you get what i'm saying out of respect for what i see you know what i'm saying so right Said so they age two, three years difference. Haney 23, two fight way more elite level experience. That matters. I'm telling you, it do. Having a harder fight because he's a boxer and he's long. Um, listen, potentially he could be the harder fight. Potentially, he could be. He could be. But I think with the elements and the things that uh Shakur present respectfully for me, and this is just in my opinion, with the level of pedigree that he he comes with. I think he's the tougher fight. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me. That's just me. Salute to Mr. Joette, putting a color in the chat for that super sticker. Much love and appreciation. Supporting the grind queen. Appreciate And you. we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I already been getting these back, but but but, but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do. Salute to the queen, Miss Joette. Much love and appreciation. Shakur the big bigger than tank in size. Yeah, he got he got some he got some size and a little bit of size. And it's just Ryan versus Brandon Lee. I think Brandon Lee might hurt Ryan Garcia right now coming off this knockout loss. I think Brandon Lee might hurt him. I think Ryan's only shot really at getting Brandon Lee is early, and he better hope he can get him early because if not, he in trouble. All right, with Corey and Frank Heavy, but Tank different. Facts, guy self, he is he is. But that's how I feel about your core. I feel like he had generational talent, and I feel like. Tank is a once a special fighter in in its, in itself, right? And same thing, you know what I'm saying? That's why I feel like they they'll be each other's toughest fight. And I'm never gonna tell nobody they're wrong for telling me. If you two people that if you tell me right now you think can beat Shakur, I won't put up much resistance to. I'll just say how I feel about the fight. I won't tell you. I will never tell you wrong, regardless of what you say. But I feel like uh, if you tell me Devin Haney or Tank and beat Shakur. I won't. I won't. There's no argument there for me. Nope. Frank. Frank ain't no cakewalk. Frank is no cakewalk. Ever has been at 135 his whole career. Right. Right. Yeah. You're in a tough position, Rocker. I think Shakur should fight Frank. I like that one. I like that one. I want 40. Dead. Don't want to give up them belts. Yeah, Rocky. He don't. They speed up to the bottom. My bad, y'all. Dante Hall boxing talk. What's good, family? No offense to Haney, but I believe Shakur and Tank's good are just a little better. Yeah, and that's no slight to him. That's no slight to him. I hear a lot of people say that, and I hear people say it the other way. They think um, Haney is more skilled than Shakur. 
And I ain't even mad either way because I support them all. So when you support them all, I ain't. If they, if they all, if one of them end up at the top, I'm cool with it anyway. Any of the three, to be honest with you. Salute to the Queen, Miss Joy. Much love and appreciation, man. There's only reason I picked Tinker with that many times. I think Dream 735 is skilled. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. I it took me a second. D one. Yeah, his skill don't outweigh the, uh him being drained, and that's where I'm going with it. It's not his skill; it's just him being drained, and that's not the right guy to go in there drained against. No slick guy. We need to tank that fault, Leo. I'm telling you that's whew. Shakur would be much more difficult fight for Tank than Devin. I'm with you, uh, Kurt. I'm with you. I got you, D one. Skills, Mister New Orleans in the flesh. The power is real. Tank knocks out boxes. I've never been hit the cameras before. I e the drowsy Leo Ryan, talk to him. All facts, all facts, all facts. Oh, Ryan don't become a UK fighter where a body shot always takes him out. That'd be crazy, right? That'd be crazy. Ryan should fight AB. <laughs> Kello, that's a good one. <laughs> fight AB, right? Hell with it, right? Twice on fight now. I feel you. Me too, right now. I got tank over uh Frank, respectfully. It showed up since the Barrios fight. Stop Hector Ryan fundamentals. But you know what, Rosia? A good point that you point out, but I think that's what's making him more dangerous. I think for that reason you just mentioned right there, it makes him more dangerous because now you know with him, he ain't lose the ability to seek and destroy, right? But you know, given the opponent and the different things that these opponents present, he's adjusted what he normally does. And I think that just makes him more dangerous. The fact that now he's stopping people fundamentally, this member, this is from a guy that can't box. You know, he still can seek and destroy when he got to you know he can do it. Right. But the fact that he's fundamentally breaking these dudes down strategically and, and getting it, it's just, it's just something beautiful to watch, man. If you're not hating, that's a good fight. That's a good fight. Yeah, Bozy defend Ryan against being a quitter. Nah, I didn't hit. Did he say they trying to just dis discredit Tank? I seen the headline. I didn't cook the video. I didn't get to watch it. I told people trying to say he a quitter almost in a weird way. It, it discredits Tank, even though I know that's not the intent of people that saying he a quitter. I know that, but I'm just telling people in a weird way. Just think of it that way. That's what it kind of does. I didn't hear it, but I'm assuming that's probably what he said, right? Find it easy to make 135. I'm telling you. Yo, he found he he in this he in this sweet spot undercard. He found the sweet spot. He good now. He good. Easy for him, yeah. Salute to my baby girl, Miss Just Do the Queen. How you feeling today? You said you had a meeting. Don't work too hard over there, baby girl. Appreciate you stopping through. Uh, it's an easy weight cut. I'm telling you. And he found it. He and the fact that he's eating right and dieting right, nutrition is a big part of it. And now he found it to be easy. You know what I'm saying? It's no longer a thing to him. And that's what people need to realize too. It ain't no more fat camps for him, bro. Ain't no more fat camps, bro. He's just going out there and he 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 going to training camps, having to solely focus on skills, strategy, and game plan, and being in the best shape and breaking you down. I heard about I heard that guy self. I did hear that. I did hear that. Of course, that will bring it out of tank if they ever fight. Right. Absolutely. You're gonna see everything you need to see from him in that fight. I think so. If you watch it, if you really watch it in the right way. Maybe it's his own worst enemy. Yeah, I, I ain't got no, I ain't got no, no explanation for what AB on right now. It's a bit wild. I don't know how he ain't showing up. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all smash that like button. We gonna keep on cooking. Um, what else I wanted to talk about to y'all, man? I definitely wanted to get into this Josh Taylor um last stand podcast interview where he talked about retiring Tia Fimo. 
and fighting Bud Crawford, moving up and fighting Bud Crawford. And like I said, man, I look at Bob Arum as the puppet master. And I think that this could potentially been a plan of his all along. Get what I'm saying? Josh Taylor been holding out, going up to 47 for some time now. Respectfully, since his Catterall fight, he was supposed to go on up after that. But the fact that he's still hanging around at, at 40 tells me that they got plans on potentially trying to make a Bud Crawford and Josh Taylor fight down the line. Now, like I said, puppet, my, puppet master Bob, I think is, you know what I mean? It always been part of the plan. Drico was good with it, fam. And he's like going at it with Shakur at the moment. Fiery debate. Where at? Where the debate at? Spencer Bug got to fight. Move out the way. All right, that's true, though. At this point, that's true, Dante. That's true, bro. That's true, bro. Salute to everybody in the building. Where at, Drico? Where they at? Where, where, fiery debate. Where at? Josh has nothing for Bud. Yeah, I, he, he ain't beating Bud, in my opinion. Taylor going to hurt to Fima Lopez. That's my prediction. I think so, too. I think so, too. I'm going to play this interview from um, Josh Taylor. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all punch that like button in the mouth one time as you roll in. Even if you're rolling on out, make sure you hit that like button one time. I think they're probably the only ones that could bring the best out of the tank. They are. They're some of the only ones. The list of people ain't that long. That's going to truly make him go on his back. That, that's my honest opinion. Yeah, and if he don't get the fight, uh, Rocky, yeah, just move up because you're playing with your you're playing with your career at this point too. Stalling your own career at this point. Stalling your own career at this point. Can you give us some insight? Who made this fight happen? How did it come about? Well, I was due. I was I was due to have Taylor, a rematch yeah. with Jack Catterall. Um and so sort it of got put back once or twice. Um, then I picked up an injury. Um, Thanks, Kurt. When I picked up the injury, um, Jack Carroll went away and booked another fight. Um, I booked him for another fight date. Um, but then during that time, the WBO got in contact with me to say that they're mandating me to find my mandatory challenger, which is Teofimo Lopez. So um, that's how that's how the fight with Teofimo then come around. So, yeah, here we are. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. I think this fight here is, is Real a bigger. Quick, I'm gonna stop him right, right, Akello. You hear him already. You hear him already, bro. Like you, y'all know y'all jerked that man. You jerked him out of an opportunity to be champion when he beat you, when he outlanded you every single round and dropped you except for one round. He outlanded you in eleven rounds out of twelve and dropped you in one of them, and they still found a way to get your funky ass the, the title and the, the opportunity. Then y'all scheduled a fight. You got hurt. Then they completely scrapped the fight all together. Now I think Jack Catterall got another fight scheduled. So he, he kind of left that part out of there, man. Now nah, he didn't want to give him his rematch, bro. He didn't want to. I think so too, though, Rose. I think he going to cause, I think the dirtiness of Jack Catterall, I mean, Josh Taylor going to cause Tiafimo some issues. But he ain't really want to get his man his, his shot. Barbosa's versus Paro, yeah, for the WBO mandatory sh shot next. Facts, facts on the card. I, I remember seeing that as well. You sent me that matter of fact. Josh Beats Teal, no smoke for 147. You see what I'm saying? J Jack signed the match room. Yeah, they robbed Catterall for Undisputed. Kurt, they 100%. Home cooking for Taylor, 100%. The thing is, I wonder how they're going to swing it with this fight. Josh this guy, this golden goose. He is, Rocky. He really is, bro. Wait, a much bigger fight, a much bigger, huge, much humongous fight sort of worldwide um teofimo's a big name i'm a big name i've got all the titles well did have all the titles at one yeah, point you did I've have let go of a couple but yeah um i'm excited for this fight it's going to be good you know boxing in the madison square gardens it's another bucket list venue that i'm taking off in my career so yeah i'm i'm, I'm, I'm buzzing for this fight and uh, i've got the bit between the teeth and can't wait to get over there and uh, whip some ass. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, you and Tia Fimo certainly had some back and forth, uh, so not only on social there, media, uh, but through ass, the media huh? as well. Let's be honest, he hasn't looked that great since he's made the move up uh, yeah. to 140. What do you think of Tia Fimo as a fighter? I think he is a good fighter. He does a lot of things really, really good. He's very athletic. He's, he's quick. He's explosive. Right. Okay, um, you know, he's got good punching sure. combinations and things like that. You know, but I, I see that he makes a lot of mistakes as well. He makes a lot of errors. A lot of leaves himself wide open. And 
I see he makes a lot of, I've got a lot of holes in his game that I'm going to exploit. Obviously, I'm not going to say them here on this interview, but um, yeah, I see a lot of things that I can, I can, I can uh, expose him with on fight night. Uh, and yeah, he's a great fighter. Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't looked great in his last couple of fights, but I didn't look great in my last fight either. So um, you can, he can say the same thing about me, but um, he is a great fighter. I can't, I can't say he isn't. I would be talking nonsense if, uh, if I said he wasn't a great fighter. So yeah, I think he is a good fighter. You, you know, you, we okay, talk about yeah. his last fight in, in, if you watch that fight, you know the cameras actually caught him before right, the judges. Kurt, going, I think he's going. It's a matchup issue. At it's his corner be. and mouthing the words, "Am I still that guy?" So he even was questioning himself mm -hmm. after that last fight. Do, do you think he's still the same fighter that we saw, like that, when he was fighting Lomachenko? No, that doing that he got from uh, Cambosis um, certainly done it dented his confidence and his he's, ego. His ego's taken a massive hit. And uh, you, you can see he's a bit, you can see he's a bit mentally fragile anyway. So, um, with me with this fight, I plan on retiring this guy. Um, I there plan on give him that much of a beating that he, he doesn't think he's that guy anymore. So he's gonna retire. Yeah, he's already got them doubts. I'm gonna King cement Judah them and retire. Was with it, Brody. Appreciate you. Yeah, he, he talked a lot. Fell. I saw uh, when they made the announcement for the fight. Um, you know, he talked about taking you out and 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 knocking you out. What, what were your what were your thoughts listening to him talk? I'm just like, good, go for it. Try your best because you will end up on your backside. So I'm more than happy if that's the way he wants to go. So, um, yeah, I, I just can't wait for this fight. You know, I just think that given his sort of profile and his attitude and what he's achieved in the sport as well and beating Lomachenko and stuff, he's, he's a very, very good fighter. So, um, and I'm one of only five I was the fifth person in history to become the undisputed world champion uh, in the four belt era. So I've got a lot of accolades to my name as well in titles. So this is a huge fight worldwide, you know. So um, he was unified world champion. Yeah, she said he's going to retire. And he said he's looking to retire Tio after this fight. Tio can win a Loma win and Taylor win. Tio was just doing his resume. Absolutely, uh, Dante. Absolutely, bro. That would be a damn good win. Lomachenko was a good win when he got that one to me. Lomachenko had that only the one loss. Um, and if he was to beat Josh Taylor while he's still undefeated, even though we know he really lost against Catterall, it would be very impressive. I'll definitely give him his just due, bro. Tio could show us something. Maybe he raised his level on the night. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Tio, Tio going to the top of 140 way too soon. I'm telling you, Kurt, it might be too soon. Loma's so small. He's a great boxer. He was much stronger than him. Yeah, that power, that power saved T.L. That power saved him. I ain't gonna lie to you. He said he's looking to retire this kid, though. Probably should have been undisputed world champion, but he, he wasn't, you know, so he, due to uh, Loma letting go his WBC. So, yeah, he he is a very good fighter. So, uh, this is this is a big, big fight. Yeah, it is. Um, so, last time we saw you was February of 2022 when you defended your undisputed title there for the first time uh, that fight with jack catterall Thrill certainly Hill. ended the in puppet that master draw. bob strikes again uh, you know after that fight there were so many people who were like yo i thought catterall won it and i was reading yeah, I one of catterall the publications there in britain they called it quote the biggest robbery in right, british D1, boxing he history uh, yeah. i know there was supposed to be a rematch why did you why do you think the rematch never happened well, I got injured. Um, I got injured. It was meant to be a day in uh, right, December, but I just moved new coaches. So I thought, right, I've just moved a new coach, so I'll put it back to after the new year um, in, in February. And it was meant to be in February. And then I picked up the injury. So that's what happened. Uh, when I picked up the injury, he went and then booked in another fight for April time. Um, and then during that time, the WBO come in and then mandated, mandated me to fight Teal. So that's where we are now. Hmm. What, what did you, how did you deal with all of the brush back after that fight? I'm okay with it. I've not really, in person, I've not had anything. I've not really had much at all. I've had a couple of people come up to me and say, yeah, I thought he maybe just nicked it. I've had nobody come up to me and say, oh, that was a robbery. 
you know, most of them people says it was a robbery of English people because it was England versus Scotland. So, and no. when you watch that, fight, I ain't need the one of them. That commentary I speak so English, the very first and, bell, and you look like you so, lost. Bro. Um, you watch that fight without the commentary; it's a completely different fight. Uh, the pause it. The hell with the commentary. The hell with the commentary. The punch stats. You got outlanded in every round except for one and drop. What you talking about? The hell with the commentary. I don't never go off them to determine whether or not I feel like a fight was won. I watch the fight with the con. If I watch the fight with the commentary on, off, muted, not muted, up, loud, down, low, bro, you lost. What is he talking about? The comment, the hell with the commentary. The commentary, the hell with them. You got, you was getting out box. Don't do, don't you dare try to blame the commentary. Blame that flat ass performance you came out there and had, bro. Just own up to it. You didn't have your best night in the office, bro. You're going to sit here and lie to the people like this, bro. We're talking about the, the commentary. Nah, don't try that. Don't try that. You know you grasping at straws when you start talking about the commentary. When do you ever complain about the commentary, bro? No. No. It ain't had nothing to do with the commentary. It had something to do with that flat-ass performance and Jack Catterall was on your ass the entire fight, bro. Outboxing him the entire fight. You got out. You outlanded. Jack Catterall and the punch stats in one round out of 12 and got dropped in one of them. What is he talking about? How the hell did you win? How did you win doing what? I don't get it. Usually you'll be like, it's how the punch stats is, is, is you know, distributed through the... No, no, no. And uh, My eyes is telling me. My eyes, to hell with the punch stats. My eyes told me you got beat up. Your face at the end of the fight told me you got beat up. Yeah, I told you. Look at his face when he aced. Did you see his face? His face, he knew he lost. You took an L, bro. Jack Catterall beat you up. I ain't lying. I'm like, the English versus Scottish. Yeah, nah, they had nothing to do with that. It was Jack Catterall versus Josh Taylor, and he was on your ass. Matter of fact, it was Jack Catterall versus Josh Taylor and the judges. The hell you talking about, bro? It was Jack Catterall versus Josh Taylor and them, them bogus-ass judges that scored that fight for you. I don't know what they scored at all. How? What did they do? Was they blind? Was they not watching the fight? You were getting beat up. You were getting outpointed. Your face told the story at the end of the fight. Jack Catterall knew he beat you when the bell sounded. You know damn well you ain't beat that boy. Man, y'all robbed him out of an opportunity. You out here talking about what you going to do. To you, you need to retire the way y'all just robbed this boy. We got dropped, beat up outpointed outlanded in 11 rounds out of 12 explain to me how did you win that fight sir how how exactly did you win doing what how do you win a fight landing punches right don't give me this oh you he might have landed a couple more power i don't man don't do that you get outlanded in every single round every single round convincingly except for one and get dropped along the way you lost bro I don't need to be no damn judge to see that. You lost. Can't believe I took the you really you really just took the fight. And again, that makes it hard for me to root for you. You sit here and talk this and you got this like sense of entitlement. I, I I'm okay with it. Uh because nobody came up to you and told you that it was a robbery. They said you just they think you just ed edged it a little bit. Man, get the hell out of here, man. So ain't nobody keeping it real with you. And how did you win the fight, sir? You didn't land more punches. I'm trying to understand. You got dropped. But you won the fight, though. Nah, that dirty stuff didn't work with Jack. Jack was on your ass, bro. Jack was on your ass, and it wasn't working. I remember the fight. I remember the fight very well. You had an off night in the office, bro. It happens. But you lost. Don't sit up here and talk like it. Ah, the commentary. No. Ain't the commentary. The judges was in your favor. You think we care about the commentary when the judges had it for you? I would have rather the commentary was going for you and the judges had it for him. I would have been cooler with that. Which which one make more sense? Or which one got a bigger impact? You, what, what did you want? The commentary to be going for you too? So let me get this straight. You're getting your ass, you're getting outpointed, you're getting beat up, you're getting out hustle, outwork, but you want not only the commentaries to sit on TV and lie for you, you want the judges at the end of the fight to tally it up and say you won. Nah, bro. You don't get it all. Nah, you you lucky they robbed him. Very lucky. You should have an L on your record, bro. You lost. And you are still a good fighter, but you just had an off night in the office, bro. It happens. Salute to him. I'm definitely going to watch him versus T.O., but 
I already, I already, I feel like, man, a T.O., T.O., he, he going to get his get back on T.O., though. They know I beat that boy. I'm telling you, he did not look good that night. He just battered up deep fried Mars bar. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Drico, he, he put he put some hands on him, bro. Put some hands on him. I'm going to lottery, say, he, yo, man, yo, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, he know he didn't win. He know he didn't win. He know he didn't. Boy, he found his way out of there. Shelton was good with it. She ain't is is going to work against Tio. I, I think so too, bro. I said that Tio different now. It ain't work against uh Jack. Jack had an answer for it, but I don't think Tio will. Facts. They both delusional. Um, Tio and Tio is delusional in my honest opinion, in my humble opinion, because of what he thinks of himself. I don't think. I don't think he's real enough with himself. Like again, I, I believe you're supposed to be confident. You're supposed to think you can beat anybody, right? But. He he talked like he'd been proving it. He'd been like untouchable and been looking invincible, and that's not the case. So I don't think he really got a real grip on where he's at as a fighter because on one end, he say things like maybe I'm the only one to be able to beat Tank Davis, or you know I'm a bet I'm the I'm the it's the takeover. I'm showing these boys this and that. They got to catch up. And then on another end, he in the fight right after getting announced that he won in the corner, questioning if he still got it. This is the guy. So again, he don't have a real grip on where he's at in his boxing career, in my honest opinion. And he got his dad to thank for it because he ain't doing him no favors by being in there, kissing his ass, patting him on his ass, telling him he the best thing that since sliced bread. And it's a lie, bro. He need a lot of work for he get his ass beat again. And let's see what kind of work he put in and what kind of performance he have against Josh Taylor June 10th. Because I think he in for one. I think he in for one. Think he in for one. Me personally, I think he in for one. It's not a fight that he can't win with the right game plan and execution, right? Obviously, because he's not without the physical tools or skills to be able to beat him. But it's about putting it together all on a night. And him mentally questioning himself after the fight, then turning around, trying to make it seem like you confident that you can beat anybody and you could go up against Godzilla. Like, get, get that. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying it. And I'm starting to believe that you don't even believe that. Because had you believed that, why was you in the ring questioning if you still got it? Then you lied and said you only said that because you knew where the cameras was at. You tell me what benefit would you have to be looking as serious as hell, looking lost? Like, do I still got it? Do I? You really needed that validation after they just lied and raised your hand. You still needed more validation from your team. That don't sound like a dude that can go in the ring with a Godzilla or better yet, a Tank Davis and beat him. Get him saying, let alone a Josh Teller. You about to go in there with Josh. I know Josh ain't looked too hot in his last outing, but I truly think he slept on Catterall and had a bad night in the office and got beat up for it. I don't think he'll look that way against Teofimo Lopez. Now, I don't think Teo will not put up a fight. He will because he ain't going. He ain't no sucker, right? He going to go in there and fight, right? But I, I think he going to be a little outgunned. I think Josh Teller's size, experience, I think uh, – him being more mentally in check, I think is gonna be the be the be the deciding factor. I think once that fight get difficult, that's gonna be the beginning and the end, in my honest opinion. Because whenever fights get rough for Tiafimo, his father is not gonna have an answer. Like he's shown to not have no answers against Cambosis. He has zero answers, man. He ain't know if he wanted to tell his son to knock Cambosis out or take his time and fight him. He ain't know what he wanted to tell him. So he not he in trouble, man. He need a real corner. He needs some real work. I heard this dude was doing football drills in his last fight. It's only so long before that catch up to him because he didn't look good against Sandor Martin and his people feel like he lost. You get what I'm saying? It ain't looking good for T.O., man. Josh wins the rematch, though. Josh, you act like the judge. God, God body was good with it, Brody. You act like the judge want to hear what the commentator's saying. You get what I'm saying? Prize fighter was good with the family. How you feeling? Appreciate you stopping through. Man, I'm telling you, you stop, yo. It's it's gonna be trouble, bro. Guys, we're gonna show him where he is. I'm telling you, right, show. And, and again, denial is gonna hit him. His fall from Greece, bro, because he's not being real with himself is gonna be serious. Josh should have gotten in touch with one of them judges to ask him how he won that fight. I'm telling you, Ash, because I have no idea how he won that fight. I just don't respectfully. I'm tired of the nonsense. I don't slight no fighters over here. I give them all their credit, but right there. Got to give Jack Catterall his because he he beat you, bro. 
He came with a game plan. He executed and he looked good on the night and got you down, knocked you down. Something I definitely didn't expect because he's not a known puncher at all. And you you're known for being able to take a pretty good shot. That's how you know you just had a bad night in the office. He's just getting out work, beat up a little bit and then then drop. Just had a bad night in the office, bro, but you got to own up to it. You know what I'm saying? But I think, you know, you know, Jack, Josh Taylor going to, um, he's going to remain undefeated for a little while longer. I think his losses is going to come at 47, respectfully. I think once he go up to 47 and get in there with some of the real dogs or something, I think that's where his loss is going to come. As it stands, I think he's going to be able to remain undefeated at 140. Ben Nelson tell us he no way to win unless he knocks him out and two ain't knocking nobody out of 40. I feel you, bro. I don't see it either. I don't see it either. Just stop. They better put a padded room right after the fight. <laughs> Is it for beating? I'm telling you, bro. Size difference gonna be crazy. Can tank conquer 140 actually still didn't conquer 135. It's crazy. Um man, look, man, with his with his ability, man, and his skill set and his combination of talent. Um, I think he can he can. He can beat anybody they put him in the ring with, to me. I think so. Will he beat him? That's another conversation for another day, right? But, man, he that's a special breed of talent, I'm telling you. Jay Walsh was good with the fan. His corner's a huge piece to why he hasn't progressed. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's facts, in my opinion, bro. That's I think that's a fact. I think that's a fact. T.O.B. running routes. I'm telling you, uh, uh, um, Kurt, I mean, Johnny, he, 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 he bugging, bro. Yeah, me too. Me too. I am. I respect him for taking it too. I respect the hell out of him for taking the fight. Catero into the fight too weak in those last four rounds. Probably so that that helped. That helped him steal it from him. He probably didn't do himself no favor down the stretch. I give him that, but he still was outlanding him down the stretch in those rounds. You know what I'm saying? He ain't make him as definitive as he could have made him because Josh tried to come alive a little bit, but I think he still did enough to win. Right, definitely kudos to him. Respect to him for taking the fight. I ain't mad at him. He's gonna give us a good fight because I know he ain't gonna get uh he ain't gonna just lay down. You know what I mean? But I don't think he's gonna win. Press conference, right? I'm telling you, this is gonna be fun, man. I hope so, Drico. I hope they don't be nice to each other. I'm telling you, God body, you caught it, right? You caught on to it, man. Shout out to both of them, right? Salute to both of them. Like I ain't dissing TO in no way, but I'm just giving y'all a real reason why I don't feel like he's gonna win. And it starts with the mental aspect. I don't think he's mentally where he needs to be. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, his father, his love, his father's love that he got for his son is gonna be to his own detriment. You get what I'm saying? Cause I think he's unable to be real with him. And the way it sounds, it don't sound like he tell him he do a lot wrong. It's like when you hear him speak about his son, my son this, my son that, my son. He got to explain every everything like you get what I'm saying. Hey, your son lose some rounds. You're trying to explain this. Yeah, my son is so much better than that. He just was doing this. And man, we show us, bro. We're not seeing it. We're not seeing it. He's not progressing, bro. He's not looking like the same fighter he was. He lost the explosiveness. He was explosive at 35. He's no longer explosive, bro. He's no longer explosive. And I think for that reason, man, when him and when him and Josh Tyler get in that ring, it's going to be tough for him. Me either, prize fighter. Me either. Salute the prize fighter. Appreciate you stopping through as well, man. Then Punk Tank put Tank on any pound for pound list till he beats Haney. That's the fight they're making. I think Tank should call Haney and should be enthusiastic with the fight because his legacy. Yeah, I mean, you know it, that that all sounds good too, but um, Rocky ain't nothing wrong with it, right? And you know, I, I'll say this: pound for pound lists are always subjective. It's always what you think anyway, right? It's nothing that's definitive or proven right it's just what people think right but um when it comes to him i think the position that he's in he's been able to navigate through boxing and, and been successful to a large part without belts defining his career right and although i know it seemed like you know he should chase down haney for a legacy fight right but um in his position he not gonna call his name because he feel like he's the man so being the man him feel like he gonna have to call that man you know what i'm saying i feel like he feel like they're going to have to put some respect on his name. And um, hopefully he shares some of the same sentiments as you, feeling like that's a legacy fight that he had won. Because like I said before, I think he'll fight them all. I do. But we, time will tell, you know what I'm saying? Time will tell. And time, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. 
T was at a disadvantage as far as his corner in every fight. Yeah, yeah. He can't boast his BT. He hasn't been the same fighter. Nope. Nope. He got his overconfidence and he got beat up by Devin Haney. T was dead trash. You don't think T or Athleticism got him at far at 35. Um, oh, you really think? Yeah, yeah. Me too. Me too. Natural athleticism and instinct. And he, you know, natural ability. Because he has natural natural skill about him. Tiafimo does, right? But I don't think it's in large part his dad doing some like some great legendary co coaching job in a corner right and, and again i got the enough evidence to back that up like in his most trying fight you know against uh cambosis his dad just was didn't have answers for him you get what i'm saying even in the sandor martin fight he went out there and was doing the same stuff over and over and not looking good and i think he lost that fight you get what i'm saying so his father has shown the 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 inability to to coach him through his most trying moments in the ring and a lot of times when he's in there he just seems like he's in there as to against the, his opponent and his opponent's team because his opponent's team is equipped to navigate the rounds and and, and give in fight adjustments to their fighter and you know what i'm saying whereas it seemed like his father lacks that ability and it seemed like a lot of time to was just winning off athleticism and natural you know what i mean natural boxing ability that he got you get what i'm saying so i think it's only so far that's gonna get him and i think the buck stops with josh taylor i think if his father don't draw up a great game plan and they come to execute they're gonna get beat up i think they're gonna take a l and it's gonna he's gonna take a hit to his to his confidence gonna take another hit if he think he was questioning himself after a win when he just beat sandor martin talking about do i still got it just think about if he get outboxed and, and, and really beat up by Josh Taylor. Just say Josh Taylor kind of, you know, make this convincing. You know what I'm saying? Kind of beat it, beat him up a little bit, put it on him a bit. Just think about what his confidence is going to be like. Just think about it. You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to want to, ain't going to want to deal with that, man. I don't know how he respond from that. It's going to be interesting to see. Right, D1. You already know that Loma win. And, and again, uh, Kurt, just to add to your point. Not only did it go to his head, Kurt, it that's the soul, that was the gift and the curse for him. A lot of people felt like the gift and the curse with for Teofimo Lopez was the belts. Nah, it wasn't the belts. The belts, it, it's cool to, to look at it that way. But no, in reality, it wasn't the belts. It was the, the Lomachenko win. Because all they did was tell this dude how great Lomachenko was and he's this and he's that. And if you beat him, then you made it and you get what I'm saying? That he's he he could be this is the 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 guy that's in the same breath as Muhammad Ali. It could be pretty boy Floyd and things like that, right? This is the stuff they told Tio all all along. Like if you beat this guy, you you know, you're gonna be the best pound for pound, you're gonna be undisputed, this, this, and that, right? So when he actually goes out there and beat this guy, what did he do? He celebrated, celebrated, celebrated. He felt like he, he that was the pinnacle for him, beating Lomachenko. It's like he completely just forgot the fact that you have more career to, to go on after Lomachenko. That's one great thing that you did in your career, but you did it very, very early, bro. So what are you going to do now? But he kept, think about it. If I'm lying, you tell me still to this day, Tiafimo still brings up beating Lomachenko, bro. Don't nobody care no more. It was years ago now. It's years ago now. Don't nobody give a damn that you beat Lomachenko. He still will bring that up. That was the pinnacle of the sport for him. Beating Lomachenko was everything to him. He treated that like he was almost retired. Like, you know what? I thought I beat this guy, this legendary great fighter, this Hall of Famer. I can just relax. And that's exactly what he did. He took his eye off the ball and the rest of the boxing world caught up with him, his skill set and his athleticism and that natural boxing ability and his father's lack of ability of coaching at a high level in the corner. All of that stuff caught up to him. Now what do you have? You have a Tiafimo in a, in, a, in, a, in a heavier weight class that is 140, one step up from 35 where he's no longer explosive the way he was at 135, and now he has to be an outboxer. And as a result, I see the fights at 140 being a lot more difficult for him, being that he can't put these guys away. And I don't 
seeing putting Josh Taylor away. I don't at all in any way, shape, or form. So I see that being a very difficult fight for him. I think he's going to be getting beat up. I'm going to go with Teal's dad. Absolutely, Kurt. Teach what's good with the teach. Fact, salute the D1. Appreciate you for recognizing it, man. Salute the teach, man. William Old School, salute, brother. Appreciate you pulling up. Back when I was bouncing for George to throw them right, right. And it was like a combination of things that belts, but that's it. That, 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 uh, Momachenko one, yeah, they still saying he undisputed. I know people got stuff that say he still, he really is undisputed, but I feel like the history books don't say it, so he not. You know what I mean? He act like the Loma, yeah, put him in the Hall of Fame. That's what he was like, yo, I'm just like this Hall of Fame legend now that I beat Lomachenko. BC, my Brody, what's good with it? How you feeling? Appreciate you pulling up, T. Fim Lopez, a real boxing coach, not his dad. That's not his dad. And I think he just needs to keep his dad around for moral support. And the fact that boxing is a dirty game. And um, you know, he um he need to he need to focus up. You know what I'm saying? He need he needs somebody that really mess with him in the sport. You know what I mean? I think his love for his dad, his dad's love for him is true, right? But I think that's gonna be to his own detriment. But I think I don't think he should get rid of his dad altogether. I think he should come bring somebody else in. He need a fresh set of eyes. I think him and his father reached the pinnacle that they're going to reach as a team. I don't see them winning another Lomachenko-type fight together, if that makes sense, y'all. I don't see him winning another fight of that magnitude, of that level, under the tutelage of him and just his father. And I think if he don't wisen up and try to bring a fresh set of eyes in outside of his pops, then they he's going to suffer an, another defeat. And I think this could be coming June 10th because I don't I ain't hear him getting no – different trainer i ain't hear him working with nobody else i ain't hear it yet so as it stands he might still be going with his father and listen i'm not trying to knock it i'm not trying to say it and sound like no asshole like i got all the answers but i just seem i feel like as a team they peaked out they reached the pinnacle that they're gonna reach you know what i mean they reached they they were very successful they beat a lomachenko that's that is saying something but the fact that they then turned around and lost to a guy like George Cambosis, no disrespect to George Cambosis. If you're supposed to be this takeover fighter, this undisputed king, you know what I mean? On your way to being this pound for pound great, you don't lose to a George Cambosis, respectfully. That's all I'm saying. That's just what it is. You don't. But that ain't the end of your career. But at the end of the day, you don't think you need more than what your father. I just, I, I think you're wrong. I think um, you need to add a fresh set of eyes ASAP. And if you don't, I think you're going to lose. And it's, it could be your next loss could be coming up as soon as June 10th. Mike Jones, salute fan. Appreciate you pulling up to you as a black style and needs a black trainer. That's, that's an interesting point, bro. It's an interesting point. Salute to my bro, BC. Boxing's missing. Emmanuel Stewart. Trainers like that, man. I'm telling you, man. Different teacher trainers, BC. That's what that is. You get what I'm saying? Trigger Hill is good, too. Well, you got to try something at this point. But with Tio, like you did, Regis. Good night, Irene. And it might be a little easier to um, do that because I don't know if Tio is physically strong as what Regis is. Get what I'm saying? And he ain't used to fighting that style of fight anyway, that physical rough fight. See, that's the difference. Josh Taylor can box and fight. Tiafimo likes to box and move around, you know what I'm saying, and pick his shots. Um, he don't fight often, if that makes sense. And I think those moments when Josh Taylor mixed that up, man, that's going to be advantage. Josh Taylor, it could get rough for Tio in there. It really could. I said, I think Tio Senior has too much ego to take the back seat for another trainer. I, I agree with that. That's the problem. I think it would cry about it too. Say you want the outside help. I think so too. And I, I think that as a whole, that's just he going to be his. That's why I say the love for his son is going to be to his own detriment, and that's unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? Because I truly think his father care about him, but. I don't think he see it the way we see it. And that's the crazy part. Like, as much as we we want it, because I listen, I don't got nothing against Tia Fimo. I want to see him be the best version of Tia Fimo he could be. But I just think it with his father being the number one guy in his, his corner, I think that that puts a cap on him. I think that puts a cap on him. I think that limits his potential and, and, and potentially the type of championship run that he could he could have. I mean. Yeah, and, and the fact that he he went out there that emotional Drico and his father wasn't able to get the words through his head that would allow him to understand that was the worst way he could have started that fight. That says something right there. Now this cor that the voice in the corner is not registering the way it's, it's supposed to because if it was, I'm pretty sure the game plan wasn't to go out and do what he just did. Go out there and try to knock 
you know what I mean, come, become some knockout artists in the first round with a guy that never been knocked out that was undefeated the same way you was. That was very stupid approach. And I don't know what, what, how was he so fired up emotionally that, that he went out there and really approached that fight like that, got himself dropped early like that. Salute to my bro, the fate, man. What's good with his, most good with it, bro. Two has no inside game. Nope, he don't do too much fighting, Mike. He don't do too much fighting. Um, we've been chopping it up, uh, well, Andre and Charlo, um, and we've been touching on this Tia Fimo and uh, Josh Taylor right now at the moment. OZ Boxing 22, salute family. Appreciate you stopping through. How you feeling, man? Never seen Tia actually box inside. Me neither. Me neither, bro. And I think that's going to be problematic in a fight like with Josh Taylor. That is a big problem. And playing number two to nobody, right? And I think that's going to that's gonna be his son's, to his son's detriment, bro. Going to enjoy the rest of the show driving. Man, appreciate you, Mike, again in that super chat. Putting that color in the chat, bro. Always holding your boy down. Safe travels on that road, bro. And we ain't never got a box again. Well, right. well, 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 I, I already been getting these, but but but, but now it's time for you to get your just do. Salute to my bro, Mike, man. Much love and appreciation, bro. Stay safe on that road. Yeah, man. Um, we just gonna see, man. We're gonna see what his approach is. But again, I just me, I'm not high on his dad as a as a head trainer. Cause I, I've seen I've seen and heard some of his trainer tracks, as they call them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not impressed with what I hear. His instructions can seem very confusing and back and forth. And it seemed like a very amateurish, like somebody off the street could do a better job than what his father did against when he fought Cambosis. I can't stress that enough and i only need to see something like that once like y'all both can't have that type of night in the office he the one taking the punches you can't too you can't have that type of bad night in the office you get what i'm saying where you've run out of instructions and you don't know what to tell your your son that's hurtful bro you don't know what to tell your son you get what i'm saying salute to my bro jim man much love much appreciation jim and that cash app supporting his grind man as always always holding your boy down much love and appreciation jim. and we ain't never got a box again well right. well 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 i already been getting these but but but, but now it's time yeah. for you to get your just do salute to my brody jim and mike appreciate y'all bros man josh taylor dropped ramirez on the inside so that can be dangerous for Tio, and i think it absolutely will be fate because i think Physically, see, this is the thing. Josh Taylor not only has a solid punch, good punching power, he has decent punching power, right? He's not a puncher, but he has good punching power. He could hurt you and get you out of there if necessary. He has the size, the technique, the skill set to, you know, put it on you in there. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I just don't. He's physically strong. That's the thing. He's physically strong. And I ain't saying Tio's not physically strong, but I haven't seen him use that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's that's why I think the fight could be won for Josh Taylor as well from a physical standpoint. I think he could he's more accustomed to being more physical in a fight if need be than a Tiafimo Lopez is, right? And I think that could be problematic for him as well. Cause I think Josh Taylor got the skill set to box and do whatever he need to do skillfully with Tiafimo and when he need to get in the inside and make it dirty and rough and fight him, he can do that well. And I just don't think in that area, Tiafimo could keep up with him. You know what I'm saying? I don't think in that area he could keep up with him. I think he's going to be in trouble. Uh, buddy with Tank going to be posting more that's ass pics together. He realized he's going to get slayed out soon. <laughs> I peeped that too, Fate. Instead of giving instructions, adjustment to see him give his son praise. You get what I'm saying? Yo, he went and said, hey, man, what are you doing? Knock this kid out. Knock this kid out. He don't belong in there with you. Then he said, hey, Poppy, Poppy, you got to slow down. You got to slow down. Take your time. I said, what? What? Bro, he said that in the same minute. The same minute. He just told him, he said, hey, man, what are you doing? You got to knock this guy out. Man, he knock him out. He don't belong in there with you. Then he seen the way his son was looking. He said, hey, Poppy, Poppy, you got to slow down. Take your time. Take your time. I'm like, what? We just told him. They take. I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. Whatever, T.L. Senior. You bro, bugging, man. He bugging. Head strong. You can't tell nothing. If he gets a great trainer who says Tia will listen to him. That's 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 and, and again, Ash, if they don't hurry up, that could be a problem that he has. Just not being being coachable. That would be that could be detrimental 
not being able to be coached by nobody outside your father. That's a good point, Ash. Well, he listened to him. Should have stayed at 35. Right, Jim? Right. Right. He was definitely more explosive there. He took one loss and bailed out the weight class. I would like to ask him that. Could he make 135? Or is it like a foregone conclusion? Like, there's no way. Because he's definitely not as explosive at 140, man. He is not. Discipline, right? Right. Discipline to take you a long way, man. Oh, I say smoke the lead, but I think he said he was talking some. He was talking slick today. Uh, fate. He was talking slick today on his um IG story, man. He ain't save it, unfortunately, because I wanted to play it for y'all. But he was talking slick to seeing you. I'm telling you, God's self, he be all over the place. Actions speak louder than Real talk, bro. Real talk. I'm gonna play some more of this interview, y'all. My bad. Salute to everybody in the building. Y'all punch that like button for me. A different fight. The commentary is very sort of uh, convincing in the word is, in the words that they've been using. You know, you did make history um, when you talk about becoming undisputed, and then last summer, you know, you you vacated a, uh, a number good, of the belts. Bro. I think three Appreciate of them. Tell me why. Why 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 did you give up the belts? Why why not hold on to all of them? Well. There go the question uh undercard that you was asking about. Why well, give up the belts? Why not hold on to all of them? Let's see what he say, y'all. But nah. They ain't gonna talk about how Tank not only won, but he was better than Ryan in every category, everywhere. Like Ryan really literally was inferior to him. Everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Like everywhere. And we give our we get a fight as they just do. Why well, don't get credit for standing on business, getting in there and trying to fight? But Tank just showed me another reason why he's dangerous. Cause I forgot. Salute to the family that pointed it out. Tank ain't even seeking and destroying dudes no more. He beating them with fundamentals and knocking them out that way. And that makes him very, very dangerous, bro. Very dangerous. Right, right, Kurt. <laughs> God self, everywhere, every category, fam. Me too, fate. I'm not saying that. He'll slow down, he'll slow down, down the stretch, because he fast and crisp early, Cordina is. But down the stretch, Shocky Foster start picking them apart, I think, down the stretch. I think it'll be a good competitive fight for the first five rounds or so, four or five rounds. And I think once we get by midway to the five, thing, will Shockey start being able to uh, exploit them holes that you're talking about he got fake. Salute to everybody in the bed. Salute to my brody guy self, man. And the ones that they've been using. But here go the question. Million dollar you know, question. You did make history um, when you talk about becoming undisputed. And then last summer, you know, you, you vacated a uh, number Bats, of the belts. I think three of them. Tell standing. me why. Why did why, why, you give up the belts? Why, why not hold on to all of them? Well, it's, it's impossible for one. You've got to pay all these sanctioning fees as well. You know, um, when, when I boxed, when I boxed Ramirez, you know, 12% of my first was away to sanctioning fees. But it's just. Wow. Ridiculous, you know. Each each sanctioning fee, each body takes three percent of your purse. That's twelve percent of your purse away. Hold on, real quick. Are we buying his his reasoning for giving up the belts? Because now he's saying it's about the money. Was it about the money, or like, do y'all believe that's why he gave up the belts? That's what he said. Sanctioning fees. Tio's mentally checked out. Philly Irish Drew, Drew Evo. Salute fan. Appreciate you pulling up, man. Appreciate you. Salute to you. Smash that like button for you, bro. 
sub to the channel if you haven't welcome to the family man salute to everybody tank the best in my opinion gave ryan a lesson and boxing man ryan my mood mayweather promotions just rumors yeah i heard i seen that too drico seen that said nah ducking come on jim talk to me bro well, i believe that's one reason it's one of the and again teach again see i'm glad you i'm glad we in here discussing this because i feel you jim because i'm that's what i'm thinking like and i know that's part of it too jim where we at with it but teachers right that could be one reason so look what he doing is and what fighters do a lot y'all we got to catch on to it they tell half truths these be half truths it's like ah, oh, yeah the sanction of fees think about it they're half truths why i say that because the, listen to what he's listen to the reason why he said he gave the belts up and he make it about the money right which he's not lying about the money right he can say that that's a half truth that's true but is that truly the reason why you don't have the belts you get what i'm trying to say and that's what he's not going to tell you so he's going to just make it about the money so that's a, just, it's, in my opinion and i ain't trying to make him no liar or nothing but it's just a half truth i ain't gonna call him a liar but i'm gonna just say in here he tell a half truth man he's saying something that ain't gonna make him look as bad and then when you break it down and say how much money you got to get these people to keep these belts you like ah I could level with that. That is crazy. Just for just, just to hold on to a belt. But hey, man, that's part of what 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 being a champion is, and you know that. So, right? Is it really about that? You know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, I I just believe it's a half truth. That's all. Right. I think he um. I think he would. I think he. I think he trying to Philly. I think he was trying to stay away. He was trying to avoid 47 for a minute. But in this, he's gonna speak about beating up Tio. He already said he want to end his career. And he's going to talk about moving up and fighting Crawford, which could have been the puppet master Bob, you know, playing all along, man. Excuses from Taylor, just as bad as Tio Lopez. I'm telling you, Ryan goes to Tio. That's a slap in the face of Oscar. More proof Ryan want to be like, Tan, yo, if he do that, that's going to say so much, Ash. Man, Oscar would be sick, bro. Sick. Right. It's not all about the money. You get what I'm saying, teacher? And I'm with you. I appreciate you adding that, that that could be one of the possibilities because i agree with that but i know it ain't the only one josh so let's finish hearing that but again this is just a half truth in my opinion y'all y'all smash that like button for me a uh, number of the belts i think three of them tell me why 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 why'd you give up the belts why, why not hold on to all of them well it's, it's impossible for one you've got to pay all these sanctioning fees as well you know um when, when i boxed when i boxed ramirez you know 12 percent of my first was away to sanctioning fees but it's just wow. Ridiculous, you know. Each each sanctioning fee, each body takes three percent of your purse. So that's twelve percent of your purse away. So I'm not one to pay that kind of money. Willing to pay that kind of money if it's not for a fight that that I'm up for, you know. And in terms of creating history and stuff. So uh, I'm pausing it. How you can't get up for a fight that people saying you lost? What you talking about? How you can't get up for a fight that people said you lost, that you know you lost. You know you lost. You know you didn't beat Jack Catterall, boy. Stop. You're not going to pay that kind of money for a fight that you can't get up for. More excuses, bro. More excuses. Man, I'm not buying it. You're telling the half truth, Josh. You're telling the half truth today. Yeah, in fact, Jim, please fight Crawford. Yeah, you definitely want to be Tank's friend. Not impossible, right? Right, Oscar might <laughs> right. Oscar gonna be sick, bro. Said it's it's impossible. It's not impossible. Facts, give him saying God's self is not, bro. It's not impossible, bro. Money would make it a good reason, but I'm just saying, right? And I get it. I get it. He gonna try to make it all about the money. But again, why I always shoot that down? Because these would be the same fighters that are preached to you. It's about legacy in the belts. And then when they get the belts, you're complaining about the fees that come with it like you don't know the game, bro. This ain't your first time hearing about no sanctioning fees, bro. This ain't your first rodeo. This ain't your first time holding no belt. Josh Teller, you talking like this is new to you. None of this stuff is new to you, bro. You know you know, you know, know the game. You know, and now we're not, we not agreeing with the sanctioning fees, but you know that's part of the game, bro. You ain't, you ain't no spring chicken. You ain't just start boxing yesterday. How many championship fights you been a part of, bro? What are you talking about? It's impossible. It's not impossible, bro. It's definitely not impossible. Hell is he talking about? <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> that's stupid. 
Bro, what's good with it, Brody? What's good with you? How you feeling, bro? Appreciate you stopping through. What's good with you, my bro? Yeah, it was crazy. I think he said he asked for, for Oh, he asked for his number. He did. He did. When they exchanged phones with Kello, I definitely seen it in the building. I appreciate you stopping through, my bro. How you feeling? We're just breaking this little, um, you know, this build down from Josh Taylor and uh, Brian Custer. We're going to finish playing this. Y'all salute to everybody in the building. Y'all smash that like wow, The man disputed for what? Two years? <laughs> <laughs> They started then becoming mandatory and stuff. When I boxed Ramirez, you know, twelve percent of my purse was away to sanctioning fees. But it's just wow. ridiculous, you know. Each each sanctioning fee, each body takes three percent of your purse. So that's twelve percent of your purse away. So I'm not willing to pay that kind of money. Willing to pay that kind of money if it's not for a fight that that I'm up for, you know. And in terms of creating history and stuff. So um, they started then becoming mandatory and stuff. So the way for me to have that rematch with Jack, I had to let go of belts because the mandatories were coming in from all the different other organisations. It's almost impossible Knock to out. keep the, all the belts and get the fights that you feel? want when you've got all the belts because Great all, job, all, man. all the organisations started calling debates, in the mandatories. Great job. Knock out. It's, it's to you, bro. impossible to then go the route that you want to go. From Wahoo! Josh Teller, full of it, bro to then go the route that you want to go. Hey, everybody, I'm Brian Custer, yeah. our next partner, Athletic Greens. You know, I take a bet based system and sleep to my Um, You know, I know, I remember, Josh, there was a, some talk not too long ago. Y'all smashed that like down for you, bro. We're going to keep cooking on this. Moving up in weight. <laughs> As she's stupid. <laughs> they are. He is a little thin, a thin lit level. fool. He is one of the little thin lit dudes. <laughs> yeah, the as well. I mean, he got the poop doesn't mouth. I have to be Bud Crawford. It's whoever's got the titles. So by the time I move up to 140, Bud might, uh, 147, Bud might not have the titles that he's got. And uh, Spence might not have the title. They might have shifted hands by then. But when I move up to 147, I'm aiming to become a world champion at 147 so whoever's got the belts is whoever i want to fight and i can beat them all mm. and that that begs the question how long will you be at 140 because i know you've talked in the in the past about it you know hey it, it's hard work making 140 how long will you will you yeah, remain he did here say that he did. i'm not sure you know i mean um i can do it i can definitely do it um although it'd be a struggle absolutely i would be uh, lying to say if it isn't a struggle um but it is a struggle but I can do it. I've had all the tests done, my body compositions done and all that um, with my S&C guy. I can do it and I can do it safely. So um, the last time I was just a little bit still in kind of on Everest and kind of party mode, celebration mode by what I had did, you know. Um, I'm stopping him right there now. That's according to his own words. His last time out, the reason why the weight cut was so hard for him because he still was in celebration and party mode. This is what he said. Then I tell y'all he slept on Caterall and Caterall had something for his ass. That's what you get for sleeping on him, buddy. But see, again, the fact that you knew you was you was in party mode tells me right then and there you knew you wasn't in a, your best state of mind, which means you didn't have your best training camp and you damn sure didn't have your best performance in the ring. You know you lost, dude. You know you lost. That's why I say the truth is always in what these fighters say. You just let them talk. They dig their own hole. They dig their own hole. You ain't got to put nothing on them. Just listen to them talk. When they do enough interviews, they talk long enough, they will tell on themselves every time. He telling you right then and there he overlooked this dude. Why else would you still be in party mode, celebration mode? That's why you went in there and got your ass whooped. I don't care what you say. You got outboxed. You got outlanded in every round except for one, and you got dropped. I don't still to this day see how the hell – People make a case for you winning the fight. I don't care. He slowed down, down the stretch. Him slowing down, you still wasn't doing enough. Still wasn't doing enough. You had a bad performance, and it happens. You had a bad night in the office, and you should have paid for it, but you did. And y'all, what y'all did to Jack Catterall and his situation should be criminal. So it's hard to root for you. So when him and Teal fight, I don't have a dog in the race. May the best man win, even though I think this this dude going to win because Teal ain't, ain't where he need to be mentally. And I think that's going to be the – the the biggest factor in the fight you know what i mean physically he can do what he need to do to win a fight but mentally could he put it all together and do he got the necessary uh i guess confidence in himself should i say to to beat uh josh teller we gonna see 
because he been again his Super Bowl for him was beating Vasil Lomachenko. That was like the the pinnacle of the sport. I told you I never seen a dude celebrate one win the way he did, and it's to the point where he still speaks about beating Vasil Lomachenko to this day. Don't nobody care. That's years ago, bro. You still living off that, and you got so much more career ahead of you. That's my problem with him. He's still talking about that. Bro, we don't care no more. We gave you the credit when you beat him. Even people like myself, I ain't had no channel, but I still picked you to beat Lomachenko, and you did it. Uh, kudos to you, bro. But, uh, hey, man, Lomachenko and Jack uh, and Josh Taylor is two totally different fighters, I tell you that, man. And uh, I just don't think you and your father as a team is going to come up with the necessary game plan to pull that fight off. I don't. I think the buck stops with – with Josh Taylor for you. I think all those football drills and that weird shit that your pops or your trainer got you doing in, in training camp, I think that's that that type of ignorance shit gonna catch up to you come fight night, and I think you're gonna get your ass handed to you. And I truly hope you're smart enough after this loss, because I tr truly think you're gonna lose. I could see you finding a way to pull it off, but I, I, it's less than likely for me. Again, man, I think Josh Taylor knows what he's up against and i think he's gonna prepare accordingly the question is are you i know you're gonna work hard to, it's not a matter of a lack of hard work with tfimo it's a lack of putting in the right work like it's a matter of putting in the right work and i that's what i question with him and, and, and again his mental and they tell you boxing is 90 percent mental i believe him when they say that so again if his mental ain't where it need to be i don't see how he wins a fight at this level or this magnitude i just don't see it Kind of our partner never get another chance to undispute after that robbery. I don't see it, Kurt. And it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. I'm telling you. Josh Line. Yeah, he know. He know. He know Jack. He know Jack put that hand, put them hands on him, man. That'd not be a bad move for him. <laughs> Ryan to sign with GTD. <laughs> right. Yeah, they take care of him. By what I had did, you know. Um and uh, I stayed too long out of the gym and ate too much good tasting bad food, you know, and drank <laughs> too much beer. And uh, I, I left it too late to make the weight comfortable and do and do the diet and get in shape properly. I just left it all too late. And uh, that's Why would the mistake you do that, that I've made and the mistake that I've, I've lessened that I've learned. So I'll not be doing that again. Uh, when do you see yourself uh, at 147 next year? Facts, Kurt. Yeah, possibly. Um, I may have this fight, then another fight. May get the re rematch with Caro, and then move up to one four seven. Um, see what happens. We'll see what options come my way after this fight. First and foremost, see how this fight goes. You know, you got got to see how this fight with Tio Fimo goes first. Um, so after I've whipped his ass, mm -hmm. then move, then see what happens. Maybe we could get a rematch with Progre, can get all these other guys that have got my belts. Um, reclaim my belts and then maybe move back and move up to 147. Wow. Um, you, you, you know, and, and listen, you, you mentioned it, but you did become the first, uh, Brit basically, uh, in the, in this four belt era to yeah. become the undisputed champion. What does, what did that mean to you? It's, I'm very, very proud of it. You know, um, like let alone world boxing, like in world box. He was the first to lose them damn belts without without losing a fight, too. He was the first one to lose undisputed without losing a damn fight in the ring, dummy. You want to see him go to man down promotions? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, jo uh, Ash, man, that's going to hurt. A young gatekeeper is crazy. <laughs> A young gatekeeper, a young gatekeeper is crazy. Yeah, he keeps talking about reclaiming the belts, and he's, he's still talking about fighting Jack Catterall, bro. This man's still talking about fighting Jack Catterall. I know he's trying to cheat him at this point, bro. I, I, I mean, I, I know he. I mean, no, my my bad. I know he's trying to avoid going to to forty seven at this point. You still talking about fighting Jack Catterall? Y'all done wasted all that man time. He shouldn't even be. He shouldn't even fight you at this point. He was just say the hell we're fighting you, especially because it ain't for the same prize that it would have been the first time around. Hell with it. Not Jack Catterall. I wouldn't even waste my time with this dude. When, like, let alone world boxing. Like in world boxing, there's only been a handful of fighters that have done it. You know, it's I think it's what seven or eight now. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Seven. So 
in world boxing, there's only seven people that have become undisputed world champions. So that is a huge achievement in itself. Um, the first person in the UK um, to do it in the four bell era is, is history, a piece of history being made. And the first undisputed world champion since my, my one of my late heroes, Ken Buchanan. Well, we don't care. We don't care. So for me, that's I could retire tomorrow. Ha I happily tomorrow see? and say I've done amazing things in the sport. And I've achieved all go. this in only eighteen fights. You know, so I'm still real Retirement and eighteen fights shouldn't even be in the same conversation or sentence to me. I'm gonna say it again. Retirement and eighteen fights shouldn't even be in the same sentence to me. These dudes get these belts and they just forget that. It's still so much more to, to, to accomplish. Like, I get it. What you did was great. Cool. You got so much more to accomplish, bro. And it's like them belts be a gift and a curse because they be taking their eyes off the prize, man. Got the belts, and then you start looking shaky. I mean, you get in there with Catterall. All of a sudden, you waited too long to make the weight. You party too long, ate too much food. All this goofy stuff, man. Again. Them bells be the gift and the curse. Y'all be taking your eyes off the ball and it be getting y'all put in situations where y'all be getting your ass beat and you be having to get saved by BS scorecards. You know what I'm saying? Jim said, I believe he'll fight Crawford. Uh, Earl, Earl will walk all over me. I think that'd be the wrong fight for him. Earl would do some bad things to Josh, Josh Taylor, in my opinion. I think stylistically, uh, Crawford would be, and not saying he'd win that fight, I'm picking Crawford to beat his ass too, but I <laughs> think he, that'd be better for him from a physical standpoint, I'm saying. Right, the Josh go to 47, he might run back to 140 with an ass whooping like that, I'm telling you, till the lightweight bust is done. <laughs> cuz, dude, what's good with it, dude? Appreciate you pulling up, my bro. How you feeling, cuz? What's good with you? You know, so, I'm still relatively inexperienced as a pro um and i've still got a lot of climbing so and a lot more, Hold on. Uh, achievements Hold on. to to you know so i'm still real way recently so for me it's history a piece of history being made and the first undisputed world champion since my my one of my late heroes ken buchanan who just passed away recently so for me that's i could retire tomorrow I have played tomorrow and say I've done amazing things in the sport. And I've achieved all this in only 18 fights. Retire. You know, so I'm still relatively 18 fights as a pro. Um, Retirement, 18 fights and inexperience all in the same sentence, bro. What are you to see? These fighters be pissing me off. They be trying to be so smart. That that sound, Why are you even speaking about retirement? You ain't even got 20 fights because you got some belts. You sound stupid. I can think about retirement right now and call it a career. Well, call it a career because the last time we seen you in there, you wasn't looking too good anyway, and you got beat up. What you talking about? I can retire. Call it, call it a career then. Stop wasting people's time if that's what you're thinking. 18 fight having ass talking about calling it a career. I ain't trying to hear that. And you got a solid, you fought some solid people too. He beat up some people. I ain't going to lie. But he shouldn't even be talking like this. And you better hope you focus. Now hearing this, I'm like, man, I've been talking about T.O. Mental. You better be you better be mentally locked in talking about retirement. Oh, because you want some. Un I'm telling you, them belts is a gift and a curse. They act like some. I'm telling you, some diva as soon as they get them belts, bro. Sound like Josh lost his hunger. On the other hand, Earl will be his last fight for real. <laughs> you think Josh think if he move up, yeah, our class and stop it with damage his stock. So he's thinking about retirement so people can still look out. And then, like they look at him right, Ash. And again, his whole, his whole, uh, his run at one forty lasted to me longer than it should have been. He shouldn't still be at one forty. He should be at one forty seven, especially after already being on record for saying he's already on record saying that he was drained the last time. Now he gonna he gonna make one forty again and fight. This dude, he, he get these fighters get on my nerves, man. So again, he talking at retirement, so he sounds stupid. He want to be looked at as the undisputed champion, but he ain't that no more. He ain't that no more. And again, he overstand his welcome at one forty. He better hope he don't look bad again. And T him and Tia Fimo put together a crap fight, man. I'm telling you, which I don't think gonna happen. But I think he avoiding the smoke at forty seven. I said this before. I'm gonna keep saying it. Ain't no other reason why. You you just felt like you was you you felt like you was drained in your last fight at, at 140, right? 
you said this out your mouth. Said you was drained. Then you turn around and waste all this time to the point where you get stripped of your titles. You didn't lose none of your titles in the actual ring. You down to like one or two belts or whatever it is. You no longer undisputed. You basically at this time you just fighting for what now? For what? He just think of think about what I'm saying, y'all. He already accomplished what it is to accomplish at 140 to become undisputed. This is what he said. You get what I'm saying? Fighting Tid Fimo ain't no crazy name. It's still a name, but it ain't nothing crazy. I, I don't know legacy. It ain't no legacy fight. So what is he doing? It's not for undisputed no more. So again, what is he doing? Why don't he go up to 147? Because he don't want to deal with what's up there right now. He don't. I don't care what nobody say. When he go up there, that's when his losses will come. I don't think he's going to lose at 140 because I feel like he's going to end up fighting Tid Fimo. Maybe one more fight that's winnable at 140. And then go to 47, possibly. By that time, maybe EJ had been done, moved out of the division. But I guess he ain't looked too far ahead because Boots is still going to be there. People like Virgil, hopefully, if he could get his health health situation together. You get what I'm saying? You got some real smoke up at 47 anyway. And I think that's what he's trying to avoid. So he's just wasting his time, bro. You already know, bro. Salute to my bro. Appreciate you. Votes UK. Salute to you, fam. How you feeling, bro? Earl Bud Boots, Keith Virgil, Stan Jonas, they all be Josh at 147. Maybe Rashidi and Villa. I think so too, bro. I think Rashidi would tear him up. That speed would be too much. Thanks, Rashidi would eat him up. Yeah, he mentioned retirement, fate. 18 fights retirement. What was that? That's crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> what is he talking about? You ain't you ain't fought enough of those guys, and y'all always hitting us with the legacy, bro. Hitting us with the legacy, but y'all be sounding like y'all say that when it's cool to say it, and then when it's it's time to prove it. You start saying stuff about retirement because you, yeah, I, I'm the first one in, in the UK. Man, we don't care. We don't care about no accolades. We want to see the fights. We, you ain't had enough great fights in your career to be talking about retirement, buddy. You get what I'm saying? Get a couple straps. Yeah, I start acting like divas. Start talking about retirement and stuff. Man, you, you won't start fighting, bro. You ain't even old. He wants to lose, so he, he won't bet on himself. I'm telling you. Right, Ash. I'm telling you. Josh versus Barrios. That'd be a good fight, uh, guy self. You got you. Hit me we go. I got you. I got you, bro. I'm going to hit you when I jump off. I got you. Josh Taylor versus Barrios can be a good welterweight. Welcome. Right. That'd be a good fight. I'll watch that, Fate. I'll watch that, uh, guy self. I like that one. Bud stops Taylor. I think so, too, um, Rosha. I think so, too. And let Catterall get his lick back. Right. Let Catterall. Justice for Catterall, man. And still TV was good with it, Brody. Appreciate you pulling up. How you feeling? Taylor can't cheat boots either. Nope, because they ain't gonna work. Boots gonna tear and tear into him, man. Multiway, he better hurry up. 32 years old votes. That's what I'm saying, though, bro. Taking his time. Josh versus Blair Cousins. Go, I'll watch it. <laughs> Cuz oh, I'll watch it too. <laughs> Blair Cousins talk non-stop trash. And you know, uh Josh Taylor may be talking his little junk back too, man. With a little, little, little like he sucked the lemon. You know what I'm saying? Man, I watch it tank stops, but <laughs> he already said I did a video on that. Um, God self, I had did a video a while back on that tank speaking about that. He said, If I touch that chin, oh, check it out if you never seen it. I did a video with tank talking about stopping butt, fighting butt. Josh ain't gonna have that size advantage at 147. That he enjoys at 140. I that Kurt, and I think he know that, and he know that, he know that, he already know that, and he know, you get what I'm saying. I'm get what I'm saying? He wanted, he comfortably, he gonna comfortably fight Teofimo Lopez, bro. He just told, every, listen, y'all, it's a reason why I play these interviews. I don't just play them just for no reason. I play them for a purpose. I want y'all to hear, the same time I'm hearing, these fighters telling themselves. He just said he's already mentally fragile. He's letting you know why he picking this dude. On one end, he's trying to say he a great fighter because he want to save face because he understands if I say Tiafimo ain't shit, and I'm fighting him, then what does that say about me? So it makes sense for me to say, you know what? He's a great fighter. I'd be stupid to say he's not a great fighter. No, it would be bad. Yeah, you would be stupid to say that because it would make you look bad. So what you're going to say is he's a great fighter. That's on one end, right? Yeah, that's talking from a potential standpoint. He has been a great fighter in the past, right? He's shown flashes of, of being a great fighter, a great young fighter, right, in the past. But what have you seen more, more mentally from this guy? exactly he said he's mentally fragile this is exactly why he's fighting him exactly why he want this fight 
because he know it's winnable. He know it's winnable. He know Tiafimo don't be ain't been looking good at 140, and he know he fragile, fragile mentally because he just said it. He know his dad ain't nothing to worry about in the corner in terms of training and making in fight adjustments. He he ain't got nothing much to worry about. All he got to worry about is an athletic young kid, an athletic young kid that can fight a little bit, got some natural boxing ability. That's it. That's it. That don't seem like much of a challenge for him, man. He picking his fight. He's actually being smart because Tiafimo got a name. He picking him at the right time when he was just last in the ring, questioning if he still got it. This is the guy that he's choosing to fight. Not going to 140, 47, and fighting one of them dogs up there or giving Jack Catterall, the guy that deserved to be champion right now, his opportunity. Nah, he ain't going to do that. We're going to go pick on this guy that's mentally fragile, as I just as he just said in his interview. He, he ain't, these dudes ain't slick, man. It's strategic. He moving this way for a reason. He avoiding the smoke at 47 while, while using his status and position to kind of handpick guys that he know he feel like he can beat. And that's Tiafimo. Sad to say that Tiafimo has looked at his food, but right now, Josh Taylor look at Tiafimo as food, bro. And he going to treat him like that June 10th. Guarantee you, he's going to treat him like that because that's what he feel about him. And he, again, he know where he is weak at. And he remember, remember, he ain't said nothing about the X's and O's and what he can and can't do in the ring physically. He ain't even get to that. He talking about mental because he know boxing is a mental game. And if you fragile up top and I'm got I'm well put together up top, I got a real good chance of going in there beating you. And that's just what it is. He picked this fight at a good time. He was smart doing it. And he's gonna get exactly what he what he looking for. I think he gonna I think he might have picked right with this one. Think he picked wrong against Jack Catterall. He slept on him, but he got bailed out with a BS decision. Get what I'm saying? BS scorecards and judges, right? Against Tiafimo, his bailout was going to be him fighting a guy that was just in the ring questioning if he still got it after a win when he just got his hand raised. That's exactly what's going on right now. And he's going to take that fight, and he's going to run with it. He's going to fight him, more than likely going to beat T.O., T.O. ain't going to lay down. Maybe he'll surprise me, but I doubt it. But I think he's going to fight back. It's going to be competitive. I think Josh Teller down the stretch going to take over. I think T.O. Start, start, starts to, you know, hit a wall where he can't figure things out in there. And I think um, when he looked for his father for help, if, you know what I mean, to shoot him some bell, I don't think he's going to have the answers for him. Cordina looks sharp first five rounds. You can see him slows. Man, fate, we, we must got the same kind of eyes because I just said that. I said Cordina versus Foster will be competitive for the first four, five rounds or so. Four to five rounds. I said after that, you're going to see Cordina slow down. I think Foster could start to create some separation down the stretch. I ain't saying he'd knock uh, Cordina out. I think Cordina is tough, right? I think Foster a uh, boxing lesson down the stretch. I got Foster sep creating separation down the um, stretch of the fight and winning on um, points unanimous. Unanimous with a potential knockdown if he get if he get too brave. Boots to stop Tyler in dominant fashion. I think he I think yeah, yeah. Oh boots. Absolutely. I can see Blair making fun of Josh. Actually, me too. Guys, Ryan's problem at 140. Man, I'm telling you, I think all the top dogs at 140. I think 140 as a whole is Ryan problem. I think that's why he he took a a dangerous safe fight with Tank, if that makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Losing to him ain't the end of the world. You know, you upset him, it's like icing on the cake. You know what I'm saying? And you know 140, that's where you got you're gonna have to answer at. At least with 136, you could claim the rehydration calls and, and bank on that as a built-in excuse, right? And let people push that. Now we would have fought at the full 140. And you go in there and get knocked out by one of them, you have zero excuses to lean on. Besides, you just can't compete at 140. Facts, fate. I'm telling you, the rough tap is Kurt. Facts, God body, to your head. And come, no kind of deserves it. Y'all know it. Do y'all think he could be Josh there? Yeah. Boys at 47, bigger, stronger, and Josh gonna be fool. Absolutely, Kurt. Drop T on the first round. That's the second round. Watch. I'm telling you, uh, watch. Because he, he come out 
Goofy, he ain't going to be on point. Ryan better call Pedro Campo, right, Kurt? Get Pedro on the horn. Because Sandor might be too rough for him. Sandor Martin might be too crafty for him. You say box Josh, then fight him for the last minute every other round. Interesting strategy, bro. He's going to need a strategy definitely for sure to beat uh, Josh Teller, a good one. A good one. And I think it's going to have to come with him being physical. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he can get out of this fight without it getting physical at some point and them having to him bite down a little bit and fight. But we're going to see. We're going to play some more of this, y'all. You know, so I'm still relatively inexperienced as a pro. Um, and I've still got a lot of climbing and a lot more uh, achievements to, to reach. I'm still got mm -hmm. that huge ambition that I want to do, become a two-weight world champion. Who knows to, down the line become a two-weight undisputed world champion? Something that nobody's ever done. That's always called. You know, so um, these are the kind of ambitions right. that I've got, and this is the kind of thing that keeps the fire burning in my in my stomach to keep me away from home, Back down in still, England, he can't, away from my friends, my family, my wife. So I, I'm down here living by myself, oh, man. training away, and because I'm because I'm driven that bag, what yeah. I want to do. So I wouldn't babe. be doing that if I never still ever never had that desire. You know, one of the things. Now, man, we gonna get into this, man. I'm glad you asked that because I almost let him off the hook. I'm glad you said that. He and he's saying he inexperienced in a way, but in fact, he not only beat Regis. You had a, you was in a whole tournament, bro. You was in a whole tournament. The hell do you mean you inexperienced? Quality over quantity. No, you don't got thirty fights or thirty five fights or whatever the case, or you ain't even got twenty fights yet. And them 18 you got, a, a nice portion of them fights were quality, fool. You talk, I can't believe he just downplayed himself. He just called himself inexperienced because he got under 20 fights. Now, experience, ex do you know what I mean? People have 20 some 30 fights and they ain't really fought nobody. That's, that's not the same as somebody fighting 18 quality fights. Or at least 15 of them. He had a, more, he had a, a nice number of his fights, quality. If you look at Josh Teller's career, his resume, I don't know how he just called himself inexperienced right there. That was weird. That was real weird. I didn't get that. Yeah, they better leave Maroon. He he fooled, man. Right. I think so, too, Kurt. I think um, Sandor Martin would be too much for Ryan. If he boxes, he can catch him flush. And the thing is, can he stay disciplined behind the boxing? For me, that's the question. I know he'll be able to box him in there. He'll have some success, right? But how long could he stay disciplined, man? An experienced undisputed champion. You get what I'm saying? Like what? You undisputed. You talking about making history? How you are undisputed first one from UK in the four bell era, and then you turn around calling yourself inexperienced. I I, I just never heard nobody use all of these same terms: retirement, inexperienced, eighteen fights, all of this stuff in the same sentence, bro. He said Josh is here for the comments. <laughs> Josh is here for the comments. Eighteen fights is inexperienced when you. Well, majority of the belts and don't take don't make better be any experience. You get what I'm saying? Facts, facts. It's quality over quantity. You might don't have the quantity of fights, but he got quality, quality experience, valuable experience because he fought solid fighters. He fought in a whole damn tournament and was the last man standing. What is he talking about? <laughs> this dude crazy. I just really take like six months to a year and you know, I'll completely restructure his business situation. I think so too. I think he need to leave Golden Boy. Undisputed and complaining about the fees. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying, BC? And you know what come with it. You know sanction the fees come come with them belts. You know that. You ain't no spring chicken. You had a belt for years, bro. You've been a champion for, for, for some time now. You know, you know better. You know better. Josh Taylor know better, man. You know, one of the things that I, I was listening to Tiafimo talk about this fight, and he kept talking about this guy is not tough enough. Those guys that come over from the Brit, those from the UK aren't tough. Do you think that people here in the States have this perception that fighters that come from the UK are, quote, soft? No, I'm Scottish. I'm hard as nails. <laughs> I'm hard as nails. I'm Scottish. I'm a Scottish warrior. So, uh, I'm, I'm hard. I've got that dog in me. I've proved in it time and time again. And um, you don't get to my you don't get to my level in the sport and achieve what I've achieved. If, if right, guys. Nice I'm with you. Hey, everybody. I'm Brian Custer. Got some exciting news. We have a new sponsor for our show today. Come on, man. Wow. 
Well, the WBA manager Ryan, who I think pay those is due. <laughs> In dangerous place, right? Listen and who right, watch the show? We allow them to submit questions through social media. We got a number of me too, from, Kurt. I love to see. It. Just get to a few here. Uh, Rod, Ryan versus from Twitter, I love to see it, Rose. Why haven't you moved up to one forty-seven yet? And funny. Once you vacated all the belts, there's nothing left for you at one forty. Well, I think I basically touched on that one there um, just a minute ago. Um, the reason was it was I was getting was going to get the rematch with Jack Carroll. Um, but then it fell through, and in this fight with Teofimo Lopez come come running about. So I think that's a big right. fight as well. So I've stayed there for this fight. Um, he's been talking a whole lot of nonsense for a couple of years with my name in his mouth, shooting my name out. So it's time for him to pay the price for that. Um, and then then we'll be looking at moving up. We'll be moving up. The, the move to one four seven is imminent. Got it. Um, Cena from uh, Twitter asks. What is your dream fight if you could face anyone, either historically or uh, an active fighter now? Who would you face? Oh, there's there's a few for me. I could be here for ages. You know, um, one would be Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, he absolute legend. He he was absolutely Sugar Ray brilliant. Leonard beat the wife. Um, two. My hero Manny Pacquiao. I'd love to share the ring with Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao um, beat you up too. Ricky Hatton would have been another one as well. Uh -huh. That would have been a great fight as well. Um, and probably currently, one of my favourite fighters, Bud Crawford. Um, and I think I've got the minerals Bud to beat Crawford him as well. You know, so I would, I would love right to now. have that fight at some point in the future as well. What do you? Just your, what are your thoughts on why Ian Spence just cannot get this fight come about? It's falling through. I, what, what do you think about that? I do not know why... Um, there's obviously reasons why, but I do not know why it's not happening. Supposedly it is happening, but supposedly it's not happening. We, we don't know, but I don't know why it's not happening. But I think it should take two guys at the best in the division. Um, and uh, boxing would be boxing would be better. Uh, boxing would be for the better if a fight like that got made. Mm. Who, who do you think wins that fight? Mm. I would edge towards Bud. Crawford, um, I just think he's got that little he's bit extra spice. He's saying might as well say Hagrid um, too. <laughs> I just think he's got that little bit extra sauce and flavour about yeah, Roley and um, Ryan, I think he's really they, good. They, they sell out. He they can sell. box, he can fight, he can go over duck southpaw, front foot, that was back an excuse foot, he can sort of do it all. Um, but having said that, Spencer's a phenomenal fighter as well. You know, very strong, methodical sort of southpaw. He'll break you down and beat you up. So, that's yeah, a very, very interesting fight. But I, I'm sorry edging towards Crawford would, would be my, if I was a betting man that's what I would probably do put my money on Crawford and how would a Josh Taylor but Crawford fight play out in the ring man that would be brilliant man that's uh, the fight would be amazing you know I would definitely need to be at my best for that fight um, and I think I can beat him you know I think I, I think I can beat him I like you ask any fighter, you put someone in the opposite corner for you, you can be, you can put King Kong in that cor opposite corner and you I'm going to win you know so <laughs> Well, they always do that. You could put King Kong. You can put this. No, they put Jack Catterall in there with you, and you ain't win that. They gave it to you. Oh, they put King Kong in there. You definitely get your ass beat. So I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that quote, sir. You ain't beat no King Kong. You couldn't even beat Jack Catterall. I'm talking about some King Kong and Bud Crawford to stop you right now. Today, Bud Crawford stops Josh Taylor right now at 47. Beat your ass, right, Leonard Mike Wolfram, right, right now. <laughs> Facts, he signed for fan. I mean, I, you can put I, anybody I can in front beat him of me, right now. No, you don't. Win, but for me, the challenge of fighting, I want to fight the best. I want to challenge myself against the best fighters in the game. And for me, Bud Crawford, in a room, my weight class is the best in the game, and I'd love to fight him. Uh, this next question comes from Steve. He must be from the UK. He says, will you ever have this rematch with Catterall? Yeah, I think I've already touched on that there as well. Um, if I'm staying out of the way. I will be fighting him again. The, the fight will be made at some point, whether it's next or down the line, but the fight will be made. That's, that's for definite. Uh, Red Rooster asks, what are you doing differently, especially uh, against Diafimo, to ensure that you make weight better Watching Portrait of a Fighter showed what a struggle it was for you. Yeah, it was a struggle, but a lot of that was down to me. Um, 
and the lifestyle that I was uh, living before I got into training camp, I let myself, I never saw the inside the boxing gym for months and months. I was drinking a little bit too much alcohol and eating a little bit too much good taste and bad food. So that, that, that was all sort of down to me, my lack of discipline. Um, and that's the lesson that I've learned. You know, you can't, you can't do that. You know, once, once you're at the top, that's where the hard work begins because you've got to stay there then, you know, so it's, it's hard getting to the top, but staying there is harder. Yeah. Uh, Stuart, lastly, at how are them questions? At the end of the day, we're going to see what he, what he, what he got left at one, at 140 when he getting there, but, uh, to your female. My bad. Omega Red Salute fam. So Taylor, aka Great Battle, Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Regis, Regis get his shot at uh Taylor. I love it. You get his rematch. Um, real quick, I'm gonna run through this before we get up out of here. We got this fight coming up, you know, Hannah Gabriels and Clarissa Shields. Like, like I said, Clarissa Shields is on live earlier. She's on her IG live and she doubled down. She was talking a bit spicy. She said she coming to knock Hannah Gabriels out. She doubled down. She says you could guarantee it. She promising pretty much a knockout. She says she ain't that good. She been talking too much. She says she be sending these girls contracts and they be turning it down. They don't be wanting to fight. Said Fran Chan gonna beat up Savannah Marshall. And she was in her bag, you know what I mean? And that's what you like to see the group doing, talking her stuff. And that's what she did, man. She said she gonna put hands on uh Anna Gabriel, man. But I played this little clip from Bernard Hopkins um explaining why he was a no show at the Ryan Garcia fight. I mean, according to B uh uh Oscar De La Hoya, he was getting uh, death threats. Oscar said he was getting death death threats, y'all. It's funny how Oscar said he was getting death threats, right? But then he do a video. He do a video after saying he was getting a death threats with one little lonely ass light in a room looking like a hostage, like somebody forced him to do it. Like, you can't make this stuff up, yo. These dudes is clowns. And like I said, word got back. Word got back. I think that's real possible too, Ash. I think so. I wanna, I'm, a, I'm rooting for um, Cruz 100%. But um, I, I know I know what's what I know what the real possibility is there because Savannah could fight. She ain't stopping it, but it's gonna be a good fight. Now let's see, man. She might come to put some hurting on her, man. We're gonna see. I I won't doubt her greatness, man. Let's see her prove it though. You know what I'm saying? Let's see it. But Savannah definitely got a real good chance of winning the fight too. Cause she got skill and she can fight. But we're gonna see, man. We damn sure gonna see. But yeah, Oscar. Did a damn video with one little lonely ass light in the room looking like a hostage, like somebody put him up to it. And then you got Bernard Hopkins, and he come today with his explanation. So let's hear what he had to say, man. One, you, you had Ryan Garcia's back all week. You believed in him, had his back at the weigh-in. And a lot of people were, were wondering on, on social media, why weren't you and Oscar able to attend the post-fight press conference? Um, why was that? Well, well, and... Because first of all, we had Facts, Kurt. They went to cash in. Eric Gomez, who is the president of Golden Boy, who handles and structure with the assistant and everybody there. Second, it what is he talking be about? about? Already, Oscar. Stupid. It wanted to be about Bernard Hopkins. Oh man, shut up. You whole ass dudes made it about y'all all week. Made it about y'all all week. In the pictures, everywhere, every video, every interview y'all do, talking about who he, what he was going to do. One of you idiots was even on record saying he had more tools than Tank. One of you dumb ass dudes said that. I think it was Oscar, bogus ass. One thing, you know, we had the assistant and the president 
hey, Gomez and he handles the structure. Yo, ain't nobody asked you that, stupid ass dude. Man, this dude get on my nerves. I hate when people walk me around the block, man. I'm calling. I hate when people do that, yo. You sound like my uncle, bro, walking me around the block. Yeah, you know, well, you know, you know, the president of Golden Boy promotion, Zarek Gomez. Man, shut up, yo. We don't want to hear that, bro. He didn't even ask you none of that. He didn't ask you if it was going to be about you or Oscar. Stupid dude. Milk dud. He asked you simply, why wasn't you there? You was backing him all week. You was a no-show when he lost. Where was you at? You start talking about, uh, you know, Eric Gomez. and Man, that dude ain't asked you nothing about Eric Gomez, you stupid dude. You don't get shut up, yo. Dang, I, that's why I be saying this. That's why I be stopping these interviews. These dudes be pissing me off. You get right into walking somebody down the block. You can't just... Just answer the question. Why wasn't you there, you sucker? Just go ahead and tell him. You bet on tank. You bet on a knockout from six to nine, like I said. You went somewhere. You and Oscar was in there. Not only was y'all beefing from what word got back, I heard y'all beefing. Y'all not even on the same page. And y'all went through cash in y'all winnings, man. Get out of here, man. I'm out in one thing. It wasn't going to be but about Bernard Hopkins and Oscar, man. Shut up. He, he didn't ask you none of that. I don't care. Don't walk us around the block just to answer the question, bro. Just answer the question. Why wasn't you there? You sucker. You left him hanging. I swear I hope Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia, lead them dudes. You and your stud brother. Y'all need to leave Golden Boy alone, bro. They left y'all hanging, bro. This dude going to walk us around the block. We didn't, we didn't even ask you that, uh, Bernard. With the assistant and Listen to him. Eric Gomez. Listen, I watch. heard you were an Oscar able to attend the post fight press conference. Yeah, I asked him one simple um, question, yeah. And because, first of all, we had. Look, look. Look Eric at him live. Gomez, who is the, the president of Golden Boy, who handles. Look at him. And structure with the assistant and everybody there. Second, it wasn't going to be about. Oscar, the one that will be about Bernard Hopkins. I promise you, he ain't asked him that, y'all. Is about Ryan being there. Listen to him. Fucking do tank. The fans that's there, the questions of the reporters are, 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 are waiting to shoot. What? else can we say than what we said before the fight and what I'm saying after the fight and Oscar will have his interview whoever he does it with Monday morning or Tuesday you feel me Kurt I'm not going to charge Facts. just go to the PBC yo. because T20 was good my bro my bad pardon me T20 was good with it Brody the fight If they saying that I was going to pit testosterone or whatever it is, that that's the reason I was trying to come up with something now because they realized I didn't try to touch him in a negative or aggressive way. But you hear me saying, watch the edge. or He got to come with the cream in this uh, conspiracy. If they felt like that, then it's over with. I don't know if it's over with them. I don't know if they want to gloat anymore, stick the chest out. My whole thing is, this is Ryan time. This is his time. If they went that far an extent, now that it's over with, I let my guard down. Absolutely not. Shut up. So you still ain't answering the question. You we had representation, man, yo. Eric Gomez, Just answer the question. Other Dude, reps yo. from Golden Boy there. Keep telling us about other people. Handle the business. It's not about us. Oh we my god! Yeah. What we promote after the fight. This dude a dweeb, yeah. Nothing to talk about. He a dweeb. Y'all knew he wasn't gonna win. That's that why I wanted to turn into a back and forth between the promoters, you and Leonard Ellerby and Oscar, and because that's over again. That's over. Fight when the fight's over. To me, that's over. There's no draw. There's no controversy. It's clear. He a who mark, lost, yeah. Who won? He could have just answered the question, not with, me, Bernard. Eh? not with me or I. 
It's not going to turn into a shit show based on one or two people on either side, our or their side. Not trying to hear that. For y'all to leave him hanging, it looks twice as bad, bro. It don't look good for y'all to leave that man hanging like that when he needed y'all the most. Y'all bogus as hell for leaving that man hanging like that, b You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, it's best not to say anything. To say a lot. Facts. Facts, guys, self. B-Dog, salute, and family. Appreciate you, you gotta pulling up and say just expose this yourself. Facts. Nah. Nah. It was already nah. orchestrated between fights being over, headed to the dressing room, where I was going to be headed next from their dressing room. And where they are going to be headed to the dressing room, to the, to the press conference. Excuse me. Because the press conference happened maybe about what, an hour or two after. Yep. Man, he ain't he he just sat up here and ain't say nothing, y'all. He ain't say nothing. Never mind. My bad job. Pardon me for wasting y'all time, yo. I had no idea he didn't answer the question like that. Like this dude spent that much time just talking in a circle. He never just straight up said definitively why he wasn't there. Talking about you gonna one thing for sure is not gonna be about Oscar and about not gonna be about shut man. You talking about Eric Gomez, vice presidents, and this employee, like, and the janitor down the street, and the, the guy in the dressing room, like, shut up. Nobody even asked you that. Sean asked you one question, bro. Why wasn't you there? He said all of this. This is what I mean about these old timers, man. They think they so damn smart. You're going to talk us down the street, around the block, and don't even have the decency to take us back home, bro. Leave us out there stranded on the island. He ain't answer shit. He didn't bring it home. He didn't walk us down the block, round the corner, and then back home. He didn't get his home. This boy just wasted wasted time. I don't know what the hell he was on babbling about. That man ain't said nothing, bro. Man, he crazy. He bogus as hell, bro. Man, this guy is sick with it, man. Miles Bernard trying to save a guy who pushes people off the stage don't make sense. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> get what I'm saying? He bogus, bro. Bernard just full of it, man. He full of dookie, man. My nose him and Oscar better on tank. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Kurt, I heard they really ain't. I heard they had odds behind the scenes. I heard they was arguing all week. Oscar and Bernard. And Oscar going to come up here talking about. He been getting death threats, but he going to like, and you notice y'all, ain't, you ain't see how he played on people in that dark ass room with the one little light, like a light, like he wanted somebody to feel bad for him. Like he got a high. Yeah. I've been getting death threats <laughs> he in a dark ass room. High and talk about death threats. <laughs> Damn idiot. Yo, Oscar De La Hoya, crazy, bro. Hey, shout out, man. My security, my security team said, we got to get the hell out of here, boss, boss, boss. We got to get the hell out of here, boss. I mean, man, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. Just go ahead, man. Just go ahead, bro. He full of it, man. He full of it, yo. But, man, salute to everybody in the building, man. Y'all punch that like button on the way out. As always, this is another dope build, man. We're going to keep it pushing, man. We're going to be back tomorrow, back at our time, 4 o'clock. Salute to everybody in the building, the new supporters, the new subscribers. Y'all the real MVPs, man. Salute to everybody in the cash app super chat, man. Much love for you to everybody in the building. And so they left him at the press conference, right? But I think it was the best thing for Ryan because now everyone feels sorry for him. I think he can get more fans. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to look at it too, Miss Joette. Um, <clears throat> he could, and and it could have kind of opened his eye to see that, you know. I guess in his most trying times, they wasn't really there for him, bro. Like, they, I don't care what you say, some type of way they were supposed to be there. I don't understand how you was there all week to not be there then and then come up with these sad-ass excuses. Y'all knew that dude wasn't going to win, and y'all didn't want to be there for when it happened. That's what it was. Y'all didn't want to eat crow. Y'all didn't. Y'all life wasn't in danger. Y'all didn't fear for y'all life. Y'all wasn't scared to come out. Like, nah, none of that. None of that. You weren't worried about making it about you. It never was going to be about y'all or the promoters, Goofy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all still was supposed to get that man to be there for moral, emotional support. You know what I mean? Tell that dude keep his head up. You know what I mean? He bounced back. 
that's where I'm coming from, all jokes aside, but they bogus. They left that man hanging. And then they made excuses as to why they, they wasn't there. And I just ain't rocking with none of them. They left him hanging. But that is a way to look at it. People are empathetic with Ryan and um, people level with him. I do. I feel like they left him hanging. Both of y'all not to be there. And then you get a little whisper saying both of y'all was at odds and beefing behind the scenes. Like, y'all lame as hell for not being there for that man. Y'all pumped him up the whole week telling him he could beat him. Doing interviews with anybody that will interview you, telling people you, he'd beat him in. Even went as far as to say he had more tools than Tank. So, yeah, y'all left that man hanging. Bogus ass dudes. Y'all knew y'all was lying. That's why b -Hop put that death threat on Oscar. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Shot that from in the closet. I'm telling you, God, Bobby, you seen him? Trying to play on our emotions. Like, yeah, you're getting death threats. He had a damn fire alarm light in the back and shit. Like, the hell? Where the hell you at, man? You in a ho abandoned hotel hallway somewhere? Like, where the hell is you at, bro? You know what I'm saying? He had a fire exit somewhere. He had a fire exit light in the room with him while he was sitting here talking about death threats like we were supposed to feel bad for him. He's going to want to be publicly humiliated. Right, b dog. That's what I think. They ain't want to eat no crow. Salute to the queen. Have a great night, Miss Joe. Salute to you. All new rounds. going to get support from the public for losing, though. Yeah, in a way, now he could yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what he was doing. He getting to them lines. Right, though, Rosia. You know what I mean? But salute to Ryan, man. He stood on business, man. Salute to Tank. Ryan to be back. But yeah, man, he stood in there with that little ass you know what I mean? Emergency light on in the back. Like, where is you at, bro? A abandoned hotel? Like, bro, what you on, man? <laughs> like, <laughs> Oscar was at a location unknown, like, because the death threats. He had to be in a dark room with just the one camera. He done uploaded the video to, a, you know what I mean, a source, and they just uploaded. Like, get your ass out of here. <laughs> he sent that video directly to Fight Hype from his video camera, like, right from there to Fight Hype there. Yeah, man, they got, I'm hiding out, man. They, they, they sending me death threats, like Oscar full of it, bro. Man, but salute to everybody in the building. Much love and appreciation, man. We gonna keep kicking this box and we'll be back tomorrow at four o'clock. Salute to everybody on this good Tuesday. Y'all make sure y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day. Salute to everybody in the cash app and super chats. I do appreciate y'all, y'all the real heavy peace. And we will be back tomorrow, man. Conversations, people praise Ron for trying, right? Right, <laughs> salute to everybody, man, and peace to the fam. We up out of here.